What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. And we have a little bit of history happening here today, if I, if I do say so myself. I'm not sure. Uh, well, I've never done this. I've never done a... What's up, I, whoops. everybody? We Welcome need back to, to another live stream from the now. Scalar Learning Channel. And Where is this happening from? We have Hold on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Learning channel. Hold on. We have Okay, we got major problems. If I do say so myself. What is happening? Uh well, I've never done this. I've never done a Hold on guys, give me one second. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is not good. Oh my god. How do I mute all this stuff? Close, close, close. What is happening? Did I get them all? Hold on, guys. Give me one second. This is not good. This is not good. Did I get them all? All right. I think I got them all. No? How do I mute all this stuff? Close, close, close. Here we go. Let's see this here. Did I get them all? Hold on, guys. Give me one second. This is not Come good. On. I think I got them all. No. Oh, here we go. That's the culprit. Woo! Man, oh, man. I apologize, everybody. That was crazy. That's never happened. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry about that. Did I get somebody said I got three dislikes? That's so mean. Come on now. Okay. We got everything cleared up. We're good to go. And hopefully now we're not going to have any more issues. Let me see. Yeah, I did get three dislikes. Damn, that's hatred. But I think it's because I think it's because of all the audio issues. So I apologize. We're moving on, moving forward. Things are going to be things are going to be good and it is what it is. All right. What's up, everybody? I'm so excited that so many people are here, and this is going to be a – what's up, Natasha? Where there's going to be a lot of people um, – sorry, a lot of people that are going to be able to join throughout the time, and I know we've got people in the U.S., people international as well, so that's one of the other reasons why I wanted to do this lengthy live stream so people from all over the world can kind of all have their opportunity to join regardless of the time zone. And I also wanted to talk to you guys a little bit and – and, and really push myself as well to get through as many of these SAT problems as possible. Now, I know we got a, uh, yeah, man, thank you, study SAT 13 March. I do, I do, that is a big goal of mine, 100K this year. Let's, let's see if we can do it. And um, I also want to start off by taking the opportunity to tell you a little bit about my story with math, just because I wanted to make sure that you guys don't just look at what I'm doing and, and the live streams and the videos and all that stuff and look at it and just say, oh, well, this guy was always good at math and he always had it down and this and that because that's really not the case. And and I haven't talked uh, told this story much, but I did want to open with that and explain a little bit of my background with math. And it wasn't always a love story, right? Hey, love from Qatar, what's up? And Valeria, how you doing? Raj, what's up? Cash money, sweet. Okay, so check it out. I'm gonna take you back to when I was in fifth grade. And in fifth grade, look, my we're Indian, right? So math is a big part of everybody loves math. My mom, my dad, my sister, my dad especially. My sister went to MIT. Uh, again, this is before she did, of course, but we're a big math family. And she was always crushing it as a, as a kid. And I wasn't that way. I, I, I liked it. But it wasn't, it didn't come, or at least I thought it didn't come supernatural. And I had this idea in my mind that math either comes to you or it, or it doesn't. You're either, and you, you hear people say this, right? I, I hear parents say this still sometimes. You're either a math person or you're not. And so for whatever reason, I think I had that in my mind. And I said, all right, math is, it's, it's cool, but it's not, it's not my main thing. And that's all right. And I was especially having trouble, I remember in particular, on multiplication problems. We were doing our times tables, and we had these time tests, and I just kept getting stuff wrong, and it, and, and it just kept happening. Well, eventually, the teacher talked to my parents, and they sat me down, and they said, well, what we're going to do is we're just going to practice. We're going to get really good at the multiplication. And they, I remember having the thought, thinking, well, I'm just not good at it. What is, it th that doesn't mean anything. You either have it or you don't, and I just felt like I didn't. Well, we practiced, and I think it was two, three weeks, something along those lines with my parents, and 
after the end of that, I remember it was so interesting because all of a sudden I could do the times tables and I could do them instantly. Like I got really fast with them from that practice. And that's why I tell everybody, I think multiplication mastery is so important for confidence and for just laying a good foundation. But I remember then going in and being awestruck by the fact that now I could ace the quizzes and I could blaze through them and it, and it didn't even seem difficult. It's just such a weird feeling. And it was from that point going forward that I suddenly had confidence in math, that I felt like I could, I could be really successful in mathematics in middle school and high school and beyond. And that was it. And that, that's how I'm, my mindset stayed after the fact. I tell you this story because that was so foundational for me. And it was, again, we, we talk about the growth mindset a lot nowadays. We didn't used to back in the day. It was all fixed mindset. You either got it or you don't. But that smashed that barrier for me, and I want to bring that to your attention as well as you're prepping for this test. And even if, if March is the first time you're taking it, whatever, remember that this is not a fixed ability by any means. In fact, probably this is the most flexible academic ability, in my opinion, if you compare it to, to any other disciplines. So that is what I wanted to start with and just share that little bit of history with you guys. I hope it's inspirational, and that's it. So let's do it. We got a lot of stuff to cover, and this is supposed to be a six-hour stream. I don't even know if I can do it, but I'm going to try my best because that's what I promised. When I was a teenager, I got a 1410, right? And now I'm busting out like 1540s, 1550s, 1560s. I didn't get an 800 on the math. I got a 770, which is not bad. But by the way, I had to work really hard for that score. I think I started in the 600s, and I worked my way up. So um, math is my blood, right? Uh, can I do SAT reading, writing? Yeah. So I've done like a couple reading videos and it was, it's just not my forte, but I, I don't think they're nearly as good as, as my ability to convey the math. So I like to leave that for the, for the super diehard English people. Yeah. Cash money, dude, you're, you're spamming, bro. Yo, where's my uh, moderators? You guys got to help me out here. Hold on. So we, so whoever's on here as a moderator, if you guys can help me because I'm going to be, uh, you know, all right, here we go. So let's begin. Yeah, I got a couple dislikes, but it's okay. I'm so happy to have, we got over a hundred people online right now. This is so cool. I love it. All right, let's begin. So we're going to start off with the essential formulas. Now, by the way, it's important to note that these formulas are not the ones, right, that are going to be in the, in the booklet. So there's certain formulas that are given. They're usually, they're like volume, special right triangle formulas, those things. So be aware of what's already on the test and you don't have to memorize those. They also tell you the conversions from radians to degrees. They give you the volume of a cylinder, the volume of a sphere, so on and so forth. So take a look at that, especially before next week to know what you got and what you can go back to if you need to. Now, beyond that, now we're gonna talk about some of these formulas that are super important. So first of all, we got the slope of a line formula, right? And this is a very, very important formula. I, I imagine most of you guys do know this, but remember to apply it, you simply go like this. You do one of the y's minus, oops, sorry. In this case, you do one of the y's minus the second y over the difference of the x's. And notice we go in that same order, right? And it, it doesn't matter. I just always say we stack the coordinates and subtract down. I could have also subtracted up. One minus two, five minus seven, get the same answer. And then you subtract that and you got one over two and that would be the slope for this guy, right? You go up one and over two, boom, okay. Next is, what's up, Aweed? Hey, Ali, that's so awesome. Congratulations. I'm so glad to be a part of that and to help you with that. So now we got slope intercept form. This is a, a real staple of the test, of course. And I think you guys are probably familiar with this one. We want to, when once, by the way, you can only utilize the fact that the, the number next to the X is the slope and the number out here is the Y intercept. When you get it into slope intercept form, meaning you isolate the Y. So a lot of questions are like, hey, find the slope, this and that. Make sure you isolate your Y. And once we get into the practice problems, you'll see me do that over and over. So once it's in that format, like if we have a three multiplying X and then a plus seven, this is your Y intercept. And of course, that is your slope. Slope of three Y intercept of seven. Now we got the midpoint formula. First of all, what is a midpoint? And by the way, if you want to download this graphic, I have, it's a three page PDF. You just go to scalarlearning.com, sign up for our mailing list, and you can get this PDF for free. So if we're trying to find a midpoint, first of all, what is a midpoint? Midpoint is the middle, right? So what do you do? Let's say this is 2, 7, and let's say this is 
eight, um, nine, okay? What you do is you add the X's just like this, two plus eight, which is 10, and you divide by two, and then you add the Y's, seven plus nine is 16, and you divide by two, and you get five comma eight for your midpoint. And I just wanna say one other thing though, the midpoint formula is not a necessary thing because you can pretty much figure this out on your own. You can realize that it's gotta be, the, it's gotta be halfway between two and eight. So five makes sense because it's three away from that, three away from that. Um, it, sorry, eight makes sense because it's one away from that, one away from that, right? Right in the middle, okay. Next, we've got the distance formula. Remember, distance formula is really Pythagorean's theorem, okay? So what you're doing is you're taking the difference of the x values, but that simply is this distance right there. And then you're taking the difference of the y values, but that's just that distance right there. So when they say the distance like this, this is like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then they're just isolating c by taking the square root of that. I, I offer that to you because this formula is a bit difficult, I feel like, to memorize and to retain. But if you remember it like that, oh, it's just Pythagorean's theorem modified. It's a lot easier in case you, you do forget it. Then we got length of an arc. So again, I want to simplify this as well. What is length of an arc? It's really just the circumference, right? But it's a piece of the circumference. And how do we determine that exact proportional piece, right? It's that central angle, whatever it is, right? over the total degrees in the circle, 360 degrees, right? So N over 360, uh, central angle divided by the total, or AKA the fraction of the total times the circumference gives you that little piece. And I always say that like, right, that's a pizza crust, it's a piece of the, piece of the crust. And then the area of a sector, now we're talking about the whole slice of the pizza, right? And it's the same thing. You're taking a fraction of the entire, not circumference, but area. Area is pi r squared, right? And then you take that same fraction. Like, let's pretend that was 30 degrees. It'd be 30 over 360. And then you'd basically taking 1 12th of whatever the area is. You got the area of the sector. So, Rebecca, you can find this PDF on my website. Just go to www.scalarlearning.com and sign up for the mailing list. And it'll give you the option of what you want to download. And you can download this. Next, we have the quadratic formula, the most famous, I think, on the SAT, right? Negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And this is, again, only when it's in standard form that you can plug and chug this way. And what is this for? A quadratic formula is for finding the roots of a quadratic. So once you have a quadratic, you can plug these in. It'll tell you the roots, a.k.a. the x-intercepts. All right, good old Sokotoa. Yes, the live will always be uh, safe for later. So for Sokotoa, all right, sine, cosine, tangent, this helps you remember the order and sort of like what this, you know, what these each these functions mean. For example, if I have A here, what is sine of that angle? It refers to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. That's the so, opposite over hypotenuse. If I have the cosine, I have adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Ka. And then last, toa, that's opposite over adjacent. So to tangent of that is opposite over adjacent. By the way, we could have also done it from this angle, right? Let's pretend this angle is B. Tangent of this angle, now this is the opposite, this is the adjacent. You see it's all relative to which angle we're taking the trig function of, all right. How do quadratics such as 2x squared minus 2x plus two come a lot? Um, it d no, yeah, it's usually, it's usually the other way where we don't have a leading coefficient, right? And that is, that's the more typical way. Hold on, let me make sure, I'm gonna put my phone on sleep mode real quick, uh, or do not disturb. All right, there we go. Um, that, hopefully that should turn everything off. Yeah, I forgot to do that. So if that's inland, do not disturb. Now we should be good to go. All right, cool. Okay, next, probability. So probability is the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. What this means is like, hey, what if we're trying to find the probability of how many time, you know, like how many ways we can roll an even number on a dice? Well, there's two, four, and six. So there's three ways to roll an even out of a total number, a uh, total of six numbers on a die, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's three out of six or one half. Rothwick, that is amazing. I'm so happy to hear that you're doing so well, and and I love that score, and that's that's inspirational. Thank you for sharing that with me. 
Okay, the good old-fashioned circle equation, it pretty much comes up all the time. Okay, and, it, and at least once, but sometimes twice on every SAT, and you'll see that when we do the practice test. This is the coordinates of the center, as you can see there, and then whatever value is on this side, that's the radius squared. So remember, if I have a 9 here, don't say the radius is 9, the radius is 3. Okay, number 11, exponential growth. This R relates to the rate of growth. Remember, it's as a percent, and in this case, as the decimal equivalent. So if it's 30% growth, this would be a 0.3. It would be 1 plus 0.3. By the way, if it was exponential decay, it would be the same deal, just 1 minus 0.3. This A value is your initial value. Say, oh, the population is growing at 30% per year, but it started at 2,000 people. That's what the A is. And then T, of course, is time in years. Now we got the arithmetic sequence formula. You know, it's on there and it made the cut, but it's not as critical as a lot of these other formulas. But I just threw it on there just in case. So again, what do these things represent? A1 represents the first term in the sequence. Uh, D represents the common difference because if you remember an arithmetic sequence, it goes up by a constant amount every time. Three, three, three. And if this would be the first term, this would be A1. Three would be the difference. And then a sub n represents the term we're trying to find, and n would be like, oh, if I'm trying to find the fourth term, n would be 4. And just to show you, if we plug these in, 2 plus a common difference of 3 times 4 minus 1, that's 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11, just like we predicted. So that's how that works. 13, we got geometric sequence. So now this is when you're, you're multiplying to get to each successive term. 2, 4. 8, 16, 32, so on and so forth. So now we're multiplying by 2, 2, 2, 2. Again, A1 is the first term, but now R is basically, it's the multiplier. So here, that would be the 2 value, and that's it, same thing. So to find like the, f the f fifth term here, it'd be 2 times 2, because we're doubling, and 2 is also the first term, to the 5 minus 1. That's to the fourth power. 2 to the fourth power is 16 times 2. 32. This is a very important formula, the vertex of a parabola. So key. If you're trying to, if you're in standard form, you're going to see me use this a bunch today. If you're in standard form and you, they quickly want the vertex, yeah, you can put it in a vertex form. Yeah, you can factor and do all that stuff. But so much easier to find the x value by doing negative b over 2a. And that is that. And then if you want the y value, just plug this in to the equation. And there you go. 15 degrees to radians. All right, so check it out. How do we do degrees to radians? If I know my degree value, like let's say it's 30, and I want to convert it to radians, I multiply by pi over 180. Likewise, if I go radians to degrees, I just flip it. But anyways, cancel, cancel, or th that becomes 1 over 6. And so we see that 30 degrees is equivalent to pi 6. Okay, And they give you this equivalency at the front in the formula, that pi is 180 degrees. Yeah, the negative b over a for sum of roots is a lot less commonly used, but it's there. You're right. It does appear. Actually, I, that's, that's a great suggestion. That's a great suggestion. All right. And remember, Marivi, that G oh, Marivi, you left me a very nice comment. I read it. Um, thank you for leaving that comment. So the, the geometric sequence, those are just those types of patterns where you're multiplying. Now, is that one going to be super common? I'm not saying it is, but I threw it on there just in case. It's again, another example could be like here. Let's say we start with four. Next term would be 12. Next term would be 36. This is a geometric sequence where you're multiplying by three every time. Um, if they give you something like that. All right. Vertex form, super, super important when they're talking about parabolas and they'll be like, hey, what is, you know, they might give it to you like this. What's the vertex? Oh, it's H comma K. Great. So you can make that identification just from looking at the, at the graph, not having to plug anything in and you're, you're good to go. All right. Last but not least, Pythagorean's theorem. I'm pretty sure most of you guys know that, but it's basically uh, a, right, a squared plus. So let's give an example. Let's pretend this is 3, I know it doesn't look like that, 3, 4, and 5. It'd be 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared for any right triangle. And, of course, this is 9 plus 16 is 25 equals 25. This is a true relationship for any right triangle. Now, Litz is asking about the discriminant. If we go back to the quadratic formula, that is this component right there. The discriminant really doesn't, um, so it's in the quadratic formula. That's why I didn't separate it out, but... 
B squared minus 4AC just kind of tells us, hey, if there is one root, this is going to equal zero. If there's two roots, it's going to be greater than zero. And if it's negative, there's going to be uh, two imaginary roots. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can get these worksheets, Carlos, by going to my website, scalarlearning.com, and then signing up for the mailing list, and you can download this. All right, my friends, that is the beginning. And now we get into the mix. So, of course, that was, you got a little story time, uh, hear my background and all that stuff and my journey. And now we get into the mix. And, I mean, look, to me, math has done a lot for me, being comfortable with it. It not just allowing me to do now and be a teacher and all this stuff, but it allowed me to go to Michigan and be a software engineer. You know, I couldn't have done that without being comfortable and confident with math. It was an extremely hard major. I got to go on, go to law school and be a patent attorney for four years where in most fields of law, maybe it's not so important to have a good math background, but patent law it is. And now, obviously, it's very obvious that having this comfort is, is really important, but here we go, my friends. So the way I've set this up today is we're going to start at practice test 10. We're going to work our way backwards, 10, 9, 8, 7, uh, or which, you know, if we finish if we get done with the time before that or if my voice completely dies it's already feeling a little shaky which is not a good sign but now i'm gonna try and st stick it out all right here we go by the way i'm using a new whiteboard i don't know if you guys noticed that but it's it's now been i think it's acquired all app and it's actually really sweet i really like it so this is the first time i'm using it and i hope it goes well so we're going to start with Z. No calculator. Whoops. That's it. Here we go. We're going to start with the no calculator section. I think this is a good zoom. 125%, something like that. That looks better here. I think I'm going to go with 125. Make it nice and big for you guys. I'm just going to quickly see if there's any... Yeah, it's nice, right? It's a nice new whiteboard. Yeah, I just signed up for this. Uh, but again, all app is going out, so had to do it. But it's great. Okay, let me make sure my line thickness is good. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Undo. Here we go, my friends. And again, I'm going to be taking this in real time, so I'm not going to be able to respond to your questions on the fly, but I'll do my best after. And we'll, uh, you know, we'll talk in between the test, test attempts. We're going to start in three, two, one. Let's do it. What value of Z satisfies the equation above? All right, I'm going to subtract Z from both sides, and I get Z plus 1 equals 0 minus 1 minus 1. Z equals negative 1. And again, I, and then plug it back in. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And if Z equals negative 1, we're good to go. Whoops. Number two, a television with a price of 300 is to be purchased with an initial payment of $60 and weekly payments of $30. Price of television purchased with an initial payment of $60 and weekly payments of 30. I already see they use that for 30. What are the following equations can be used to find the number of weekly payments required to complete the purchase? So set, when is this going to equal 300? And then we, uh, oh wait, they just want the equation. Here we go. 30W plus 60 equals 300. Boom, done. Number trace. The table above shows shipping, char shipping charges for an online retailer that sells sporting goods. There's a linear relationship between the shipping charge and the weight of the merchandise. Which function can be used to determine the total shipping charge in dollars for an order with a merchandise weight of X pounds? So we can calculate the slope here. This is going up by, so this is going up by five, so that's the run. And the rise is four, four dollars and 95 cents, I believe. Let's double check, 16. Nine, one, 10, four. Yeah, 4.95. So the slope is 4.95 over five which is not that, right? That's the slope next to the X. So it's, it's gotta be 99 cents, right? And then it's gotta be B because 
five times 99 cents is not this, right? It's five times that, which is 495 plus this, which gives you 1694. And I, I don't have to double check that math. It has to be. It's the only viable, viable one. Okay, number four, the line in the XY plane above represents the relationship between the height in feet and the base diameter in XY for cylindrical door columns. Okay, how much greater is, so wait, what? Hold on. This is the height. And this is the base diameter. Let me make this a little less thick. Okay, that's better. How much greater is the height of a Doric column that has a base of five? How much greater is the height of a Doric column that has a base diameter of five feet, which is 35, than the height of a Doric column that has a base diameter of two feet, which is 14. So 35 minus 14, 21. Boom, done. Numero 5 if x is greater than 0, which the following is equivalent to the given expressiones. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of x squared is x. Boom, done. That's it. Numero 6 -o. What are the values of x that satisfy the equaciones above? All right, I'm going to factor. Wait a minute. Hold on. Definitely not 1 because that zeroes out the denominator. I'm going to factor the top over x minus 1. Cancel equals negative 2. x plus 1 equals negative 2. Subtract 1 from both sides. x equals negative 3. And there's the winner. Double check. That's 9 minus 1 is 8, or negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, and that is negative 2. Just let's double check negative 1 doesn't work, but I'm sure it doesn't. Negative 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0, so it'd be 0 over negative 2. That's not negative 2. We're good to go. Seviones, the graph of y equals f of x is shown in the xy plane. What's the value of f of 0? So they're basically saying when this is when x equals 0 right here, and it's 4. Boom, done. Function notation. Numero 8 -o. In the figure above, point B lies on AD. Point B lies on AD. What is the value of 3x? Got it. Okay. So this is 90, which means this angle is 90, which means x plus 2x plus 2x equals 90, which means 5x equals 90. Divide by 5, divide by 5. My little trick to divide by 5. Cross off the zero and double it, so x equals 18. And they want 3x, right, which is 54. Make sure I didn't make a mistake. Yeah. Number nine. Here we go. Which of the following is an equation of line L in the xy plane? It's got to have a y in it. So, ooh, okay, so here, I'm going to write the equation first, and then I'll convert it to this standard form. So it's y equals negative x minus 4. And then I'm going to add x to both sides. x plus y equals negative 4. And we're good to go. Uh, let's just plug and chug just to make sure. If I plug in negative 4 for x and 0 for y, boom. Negative 4 for y, 0 for x, boom, it works. All right, 10. And the graph of this is shown if the graph crosses the y axis to point 0, k. What is the value of k? All right. So that means if I plug 0 in for x, I'll get 12. That's literally what it is, right? Because it's the y-intercept, so k is 12. That's it. Um, do I need to do anything? to? I think that's, we're good on that. 11, a circle in the xy plane has center 5, 7 and radius 2. Okay, remember I said circle equation, right? So that's x minus 5 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals 2 squared, which is 4. And they want the equation straight plug and chug, and it's this guy. X minus 5, Y minus 7, boom. Numero 12 -o. In the figure above, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. What is the value of cosine of E? Guess what? If they're similar, cosine of E is the same as cosine of B. So I don't even need to figure out the values of this triangle. Check it out, right? Because these are corresponding angles. So cosine of B adjacent over hypotenuse, 12 over 13, and we're good to go. Number 13, let me make sure I didn't skip, yeah. In the xy plane, the graph of the function, that has two x-intercepts. What's the distance between the x-intercepts? First, let's find the x-intercepts, a.k.a. set equal to zero and factor. Again, we factor, we're starting off with the x's. What two numbers multiply to four and add to five? 
boom, boom. My x-intercepts are negative four and negative one because what zeroes this out and what zeroes that out? What's the difference, distance between these guys? Three, boom, done. Number four, what are all the values of x to satisfy the given equationes? Now, you can plug and chug if you want, but I can definitely see it's not one, so it's gotta be nine, I assume. But anyways, let's, let's check it out. So if I plug nine in, and then there's a much longer algebraic way, but here's a great, I mean, look, if I plug one in, I get four, right? Square root of four equals one minus three. Square root of four is two does not equal negative two. Now you might be like, well, wait a minute. Square root of four is also negative two. In these questions, we're only taking the positive root, okay? So watch out for that. Um, but nine works just fine. Nine times four is 36 equals nine minus three. That is six equals six, so we're good to go. 15, in the system of equations above, A is a constant for which of the following values? In the system of equations above, A is a constant. For which of the following values of A does the system have no solutions? Okay, so if it has no solutions, it means the slopes are the same. So the top one is Y equals 3X plus 6. The bottom one is negative ax plus 4y equals negative a over 2x um, plus 2. So these are the two equations. Wait, let me just make sure. 3x plus 6, a negative a over. Okay, good. So for which value, <clears throat> which of the following values of a does the system have no solution? So we're trying to figure out when negative, because they already have different y-intercepts, so we're good there. Negative a over two, when does negative a over two equal three? Multiply both sides by negative two, and it's negative six. Now let's plug it in and make sure if that's negative six x plus two y equals four. We already know this one has a slope of three. Add six x to both sides, divide by two, and you get three. Yeah, yeah. free response, we're blazing. <clears throat> a manufacturer shipped units of a certain product to two locations. The equation above shows the total shipping cost and for shipping C units to the closer location and F units to the farther. If the total shipping cost was 47,000 and 3,000 were shipped to the farther location. How many units? Okay, solve for C, plug and chug. 47,000 equals 5C plus, that's 12 times three is 36, plus the three zeros. Subtract, subtract. 5C equals 11,000. Divide by five, remember my trick? Take off a zero and double, and it's 2,200. Just make sure it's right by the answer. Yeah, I think we're good there. Yeah, uh, if A and B are the solutions to the equation above, what is the value of A minus B? This is how we solve absolute value. Split, split. 2X plus 1 equals 5, just as is without the absolute value. And 2X plus 1 equals negative 5, a.k.a. flip the sign. 2X equals minus 1 from both sides. 4X equals 2. 2x equals negative 6 when we subtract 1. x equals negative 3. So what is that? Let's call this a and this b. It's arbitrary. It doesn't matter. 2 minus negative 3 becomes 5. But if I did it the other way, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5 absolute value. That is still positive 5. All right. One purchased an antique that had a value of 200 at the time of the purchase. Each year, the value of the antique is estimated to increase by 10% over its value the previous year. So 200. The next year, it's 10% more, 220. Next year, it's 10% more, which is 22, so it becomes 242. Next year, it's 10% more, which would be 24.2. 66. And so on and so forth. The estimated value of the antique in dollars two years after purchase can be represented by the expressiones 200A, where A is a constant. What is the value of A? Okay, so it's this value. Um, it should be one. Okay, I'll show you there's two ways to do it. 
First of all, it's going up by 10% each year. So it's multiplying by 1.1. But for two years, you square this, which is 1.21. That's one way to find A. The other way is since I figured this out, I could have said 200A equals 242. Divide both sides by 200. And divide both by 2, and you get 121 over, over 100, which simplifies to 1.21 as a decimal. All right, 19 based on the system equation was the value of 5x plus 5y. Look how nice this is if you don't try and actually solve for x. Just add these together. Look at that. 5x plus 5y equals 2,500. Boom. That's it. Last but not least, if u plus t equals 5 and u minus t equals 5, what's the value of this times this? Crazy town. Unless you remember my rule, factor, 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 u minus t. And even if I don't know what it's going to do, I'm still going to factor, right? This is 2, and this is 2, and this is 5. Look at that. It's nice and easy. 2 times 5 times 2. 10 times 2 is 20 for the win. Okay, let's just make sure I didn't make a mistake. That's 2, and then that's that time that, which is 2 times 5 is 10 is 20, yeah. All right, we got 11 minutes to spare. I have taken this test before, actually twice, so that's probably why I'm going even faster than normal. Just letting you know. Okay, hold on. Let me see where I... I got to look up the answers real quick. Okay, we want practice test 10, right? Do, 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 do. Let's go back to the beginning. Oh, whoops, sorry about that. Here we go, my friends. And I'll use the good old fashioned red pen of justice. B C B C A. B C Ooh, that's not red. That's no no good. Come on now. That looks red. Hmm. Or is this red or is that orange? I'm a little confused. I guess we'll just roll with that. It looks red enough. Hmm. Wait a minute. Oh, there's my red. There we go. There we go. It's strange that they don't have that as one of the standard ones, right? So anyways, B, C, B, C, B, C, A, B, C, A. And then we got six is A, D, C, C, D. A, D, C, C, D. And then we got 11, which is... A, B, C, B, A, A, B, C, B, A. Sweet, so all of those are good. And then we got 16 is 2,200, nice. Five, amazing, uh, 1.21, amazing. 2,500 and 20 for the win, all right. Go ahead and minimize that. And let's see how peoples are doing. Um, Yes, I'm going to post this. All this stuff always gets posted. Always. Um, all right. Okay. So, sorry about that, guys. I don't get, like, I don't understand. Can somebody tell me what's the purpose of spamming? I don't get it. Like, why would somebody, why would somebody come on a stream and do that? Does anybody have a, a reason? Can I go over 17? Yeah, for sure. Uh, no, I'm not, but I'm probably taking the May one. Okay, number 17. Here we go. All right. So when you solve... When you solve a, an absolute value, it's very important that you remember the key thing is you're going to isolate the, the absolute value and then 
Yeah, I, I, should I just block them completely? How do I do that? Do I just go like this? And do I just say remove? Because I already hid him. I don't know. You guys tell me what to do. I'll do whatever. He's whack with all that spamming. All right, so 2x two, two plus 1, we got absolute value. Uh, and once the absolute value is isolated, I say bifurcate, meaning you split it into two pieces. And the first one is just the same equation, but without the absolute value. And... And the second one is the same thing, but, but this one becomes negative. You see what I'm saying? And then you just solve the two equations and, and that's all it, that's it. How do I do percentage so fast? Well, it just ends up being an extrapolation of multiplication. So it's just a product of my mental math kind of practice and stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, now we got to go to the calculator section. And I've cut 55 minutes up on the clock. You guys enjoy, oh, 15, yes. What is the absolute value of a negative number? Good question, Maria. So I call absolute value the positive purifier, all right? So for example, absolute value of negative three is three, but absolute value of positive four is just four. So whatever comes out is positive. Yes, absolute value of a negative is a positive. Yes, Jenny. Wait, did I not say that? I think I did. Okay, and oh, are you asking why the x value is negative three? That is because the x is negative three. You plug that in, you get negative six plus one is negative five, but then the absolute value of the negative five gives you five. That solves the equation. So it doesn't mean the solution has to be positive per se. All right. Um, so you want to go over number 9 and 15, and then I'm, i got to move on. So 15. 15 is all about recognizing one principle and one principle only. When they say that this has no solution, right, it means that the slopes are equivalent. So you can either use, as somebody mentioned before, what is it? Like slope is, um, it's negative A over B, right? So you can either use this straight away, and that's a nice shortcut. So negative A over B, which is 1, must equal negative A over 2, and then cross multiply, and you get negative A equals 6, A equals negative 6. That's a really slick way to do it. A, Slipknot, Michelle, you're so welcome. Okay, I think the last one I got was 9, and then John, unfortunately, I got to move on to the next one. Okay, this one, if you, if you forget slope in it, first of all, don't eat, just ignore the choices. That's what I did, right? I put it in slope intercept form. So when you have it in slope intercept form, that's half the, more than half the battle. Then you're like, which one of these is the same? Well, you notice these are all in standard form, meaning the X is on the other side. So just add X to both sides. Boom. And I get X plus Y equals negative four and we're good to go. Okay. That's how we do it. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Section four. Let's begin. 55 minutes around the clock. We got 38 problems, and we're going to do our thing. Here we go. We're going to start in three, two, one. Let's do it. A helicopter initially hovering 40 feet above the ground begins to gain altitude at a rate of 21 feet. Oops, I'm in red at 21 feet per second, which is the following, and it starts at 40. So 40 is the y-intercept, which is not this one, and we're not subtracting, because we're not like going down, right? So it's hovering here, and then it's going up. So it's gonna be this guy, because that one's wrong. This one doesn't even have a T, so that's totally out. Oh, we gotta zoom in. Sorry, guys. Okay. Boom, number two. A text messaging plan charges a flat fee of $5 per month for the next $5 per month for up to 100 text messages, plus 25 cents for each additional text sent that month, which of the following graphs represents the cost of Y for sending X text. So this one looks good because it's $5, $5, $5, up to 100, and then we're doing 25 cents. It's a little steep of a slope, but I guess if this is supposed to represent 100, you know, whatever, um, if this was theoretically 200, that would be... Uh, another 25 bucks, so it kind of makes sense, uh, but 
This one makes no sense because why should it drop? This one doesn't start for the 100 techs at 5, and this one, yeah, so those are all out. Number three. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, boy. What am I doing? Jake buys a bag of popcorn at a movie theater. He eats half the popcorn during the 15 minutes of previews. So let's say, okay, this one looks pretty good. Fit, fit, no, wait. This would be 15 minutes. Okay, then he stops eating for the next 30 minutes. So then for 30 minutes, he doesn't eat, but that doesn't look like 30 minutes. This distance would be 30 minutes. So I'm saying A is out. This one looks good to me because this is 15 to 45. I'm feeling like B is the winner, but let's keep reading. Let's not even circle it. Let's wait. Then he gradually eats until he accidentally spills all of his popcorn. Gradually, gradually, gradually. Boom. At the, at the, uh, spills it all. So that's why the sharp drop. So B looks really good to me. This means he gets a refill, right? If it's going up and this means he's getting popcorn, getting popcorn, getting popcorn. And then, yeah, that doesn't make sense. All right. Cause we're talking about amount of popcorn in the bag. Not like, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Number four, 20 minus X equals what is the value of three X? Don't answer X, right? So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. Negative x equals negative 5, right? 15 minus 20 is negative 5. Multiply both sides by negative 1. x equals 5. But don't choose that one because they want 3x. 3 times 5 is 15. And, well, you can't really plug it back in, but you can plug the 5 in and you know it works. Number 5. For the function defined above, what is the value of f of negative 1? This just means to plug in negative 1 for x. Negative 1 plus 3 over 2 equals 2 over 2 equals 1. That is the function value. That is the winner. Six, which of the following is equivalent to this? Distribute, distribute. 2x to the third, because I'm adding that exponent of 1, minus 2 times 3 is 6x to the first times x plus times x to the first is x squared. You're out, you're out, you're in. Boom, done. Seven, a retail company has 50 large stores located in different areas throughout a state. A researcher for the company believes that employee job satisfaction varies greatly from store to store. Which of the following sampling methods is most appropriate to estimate the proportion of all employees of the company who are satisfied with their job? Okay. Okay. Selecting one of the 50 stores at random and surveying. No, because they think it varies from store to store, so that wouldn't help. I think 10 employees from each store at random and then surveying each employee selected. That's pretty good. Surveying the 25 highest paid into no, that skews why the higher, higher paid ones are probably happier. Well, theoretically, I guess we don't know. Creating a website where they can express their opinions. No, because this biases the people who want to express their opinions. Maybe all the unhappy people want to express their opinions. The happy people are chilling. So it's B. Number eight, the total amount deposited. The two graphs above show the total amounts of money that Ian and Jeremy can have deposited into their savings account for the first seven weeks after opening their accounts. After they made their initial deposits, how much more did Ian deposit each week than Jeremy? So they, he deposited 100, he deposited 300. Um, Jer so Ian deposited more. So it look, looks like in one week, so Jer Ian's depositing 100 every week, right? 200, 300, 400. And Jeremy looks like he's depositing 50, 50, 400, 450, 500. How much more did Ian deposit each week? 50 bucks. Done. Nine, the function H is defined. Oops, sorry. Let me move this back front and center. By the way, this is the calculator section, but we haven't needed it yet. So the function H is defined above. What is the, what is it? Okay, again, plug and chug, right? That's two to the fifth because I'm plugging in five for X minus Two to the third. I have this one memorized. Two to the fifth is 32. Two to the third is eight. Subtractiones, and we get 24. Just make sure that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, we got to go to the next thing here. I mean, this is a much better whiteboard. I hate to say Like, I love all app. This whiteboard is so good. Okay, a researcher surveyed a random sample of students from a large university about how often they see movies. Using the sample data, the researcher estimated that 23% of the students... Okay, hold on. Survey sample Surveyed a random sample of students from a large university about how often... 23% of the students in the population saw a movie at least once. 
the margin of error for this estimate is 4%. So it could be as high as 27, and it could be as low as 19. That's what margin of error means, which is fine as the most appropriate conclusion about the students at the university. It is unlikely that less than 23% know, not necessarily. At least 23%, but no more than no, because we already see them, and that's too definitive, at least and no more, no. The researchers between 19 and 27% sure that no. This is conflating confidence measurement with margin of error. It is plausible that the percentage of students who see a movie at least once per month is between nice language, not too definitive, but yes, like we said, between 19 and 27. The table above shows two lists of numbers. Which of the following is a true statement comparing these lists in A and B? Okay, they're talking about means and standard deviations. First of all, remember, you don't have to calculate standard deviation. You just have to understand it, and it's about the spread. So look, this data is more tightly packed than this, which means SD here of A is greater than SD of B. We'll come back to the mean. So the standard deviations, the standard deviations are not the same. Um, now we, I don't know if the means are different. So let's see one plus two plus three, that's six, 10, 15, 21. We'll just get the totals because they're the same number, right? And then this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 21. So it's both 21. So the means are the same. SDs are different. Boom, done. Again, still haven't used a calculator. We could, I'm just choosing not to for time. A book was on sale for 40% off its original price. Let's say the original price is that. 40% off is the same as 60% of it, right? Because we're taking away 40%. So this is the original times, and then what remains, the 60%, is 18. The sale price was 18. So 60% of the original is the sale price. What was the original price? Isolate. Once you have the setup, the thinking part is removed and you just follow the operations. 18 divided by 0. 0.6 is simply 30 bucks. And you can verify that 60% of 30 is 18, right? 0. 0.6 times 30. All right, number 13. Three colonies of insects were treated with a different pesticide over an eight week period to test the effectiveness of the three pesticides. Colonies A, B, and C were treated with A, B, and C respectively. Great. A, B, and C. Okay, got you. So this is pesticide A, pesticide B, pesticide C. Cool. Each pesticide was applied every two weeks to one of the three colonies over the eight-week period. The bar graph above shows the insect count. Zero, two, four, six, and eight weeks. Okay. Which of the following colonies showed a decrease in size every two weeks after the initial treatment? Okay. So not C, obviously, because it jumps. Yes, A. And yes, B. So A and B. One and two. Boom. Of the following, which is the closest to the ratio of the total number of insects in all three colonies in week eight to the total number of insects at the time of the initial treatment? Of the following, which is the closest to the ratio of the total number of insects? At the initial T8, T0. Okay. So T8 would be, it looks like approximately 20 plus 10 is 30 plus 50 is like 80, about. And then T, oh no, that was T8, sorry. And then the initial is just estimating, right? So it's 55 plus, or 58 maybe, plus 65, plus 80, there's approximate, right? 12, let's say 200, this is about 200, right? Which is the final closest ratio of the number and says on week eight. So we got the right setup. 80 to 200, that's like 8 to 20, which is like 4 to 10, which is like 2 to 5. 
Cool. Number 15, a right circular cone. Ooh. So we got a cone in the mix. Has a volume of 24 pi. If the height of the cone is 2 inches, always draw it out, right? Height of the cone is 2 inches. What is the radius? Solving for radius. So first of all, what is the formula for the volume of a cone? One third. Don't forget the one third. Pi r squared times h. So basically one third times the base, which is the circle, times the height. So there's my formula, 24 pi, because we know the volume equals that. And we know the height is 2. Now we solve. First, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. 2 pi r squared, because I plugged in 2 for the height, equals 3 times that side, which is 72 pi. Divide both sides by pi. Divide both sides by 2. r squared equals 36. Square root, square root, r equals 6. Just to make sure that works, it is pi r squared, which is 36 pi times the height of 2, and that's 72 pi, and then one third of that is 24 pi. We're good. Okay, 16. In 2015, the population of city X and city Y were equal. From 2010 to 2015, okay, so wait, hold on. Let me draw this out like this. Um, okay, I don't know. From 2010 to 2015, the population of city X increased by 20%. Okay, so if it was X, it's now 1.2X. So Y decreased by... 10%. So if it was Y, I'll call it 0.9 Y, right? Okay. And then these guys equal each other. That's what they said, right? 2015, they're equal. If the population of city X was 120, what is Y? All right. So then I need a calculator for this. Okay. Hold on. So then that's 120. So then 1.2 times 120 equals 0.9y. 120,000. No, what? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, did I miss a zero? Oh, I, I messed up. I messed up the zero. 1.2 times. So 144,000. One four four zero 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 equals point nine y. So then to solve for y, which is the population of city y in two thousand ten, divide by point nine, divide by point nine. It's got to be big. It's going to be sixty for sure. But all right, sweet. That's how we do it. The volume of a sphere is that where r is the radius of the sphere, which of the following gives the radius. Okay, isolating quantities, which of the following gives the radius in terms of the volume, so isolating r. So first multiply both sides by 3 fourths, the reciprocal, right? Equals pi r cubed. Then I'm going to divide by pi, which would basically throw the pi on the bottom. And then we're going to take the cube root and get rid of that. So it's the cube root of 3 fourths. It's this one. So the pi, you see the pi is on the bottom. They just threw the v up top. Same difference, right? I can leave it there. I can throw it up top. It's the same. Yeah. 18. The table above shows the results of a survey in which tablet users were asked how often they would watch the video advertisements in order to access streaming content for free. Based on the table, which finds the closest to the probability that a tablet user answered always Based on what is the closest probability that tablet user answered always, given that the user did not answer never? Do 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 do. That's go. So that's go. So we're assuming it's not that. So once we're in this bracket, what's the probability? So it'd be thirty point nine over thirty point nine plus thirteen point five. But basically, from the total of the remaining, and we can keep it as a percentage. It's all good. It, it still works. So thirty point nine plus thirteen point five. Plus, double, triple check the numbers here, right? We're relying on the calculator. Equals, and then it's 
30.9 divided by that. And then times 100 because we want this as a... No, we don't. We want it just like that. Sorry. And we're good to go. Number 19, the equation above A is a constant. The graph of the equation in the xy plane is a parabola. What if the following is true about z parabola? So by the way, the vertex is... Because remember, we talked about vertex form, right? That's the x value, but it's positive 3. So goodbye to you guys. And then this is the regular value. You don't flip that one. So this one you flip, this one you don't. So the vertex is going to be at 3, comma a. Now the question is, is it a minimum or a maximum? Well, because that a term is negative, this is going to go like this. So it's a maximum. It's got to be a max. So yeah, you're out. And not negative 3, 5, 3. Boom. Moving on. Oh, wait, where's 20? The maximum value of a data set consisting of 25 positive integers is 84. A new data set consisting of 26 positive integers is created by including a 96 in the original data set. Which of the following measures must be 12 greater for the new data set than for the original data set? The, the range. <laughs> That's it. Because now, I mean, the other ones could be, but the range has to be because, like, let's say... If the bottom value was a 5, no, let's make it a 4, easier. If the bottom value was a 4, it was a range of 80. Now it's a range of 92, right? And that's that. 21. Clayton will mix X milliliters of a 10% by mass saline solution right there with a 20% Y. It's going to create 18% of mass saline solution. The equation above represents this situation. If Clayton used 100 milliliters of the 20%, that's Y, by mass, how many milliliters of the 10? Okay, this is just straight plug and chug. 0.1x plus 100 times that is 20. Equals 0.18 times x plus, and y is 100, right? Distribute, distribute. 0.18x plus 18 equals 0.1x plus 20. I could multiply everything by 100, but whatever. I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides, and I got 0.1x plus 2 equals 0.18x. Subtract 0.1x, subtract 0.1x, boom. 2 equals 0.08x. I think it's 25. Ayo. Okay, so now we're going to just double check. So 100 milliliters of this guy... So that means it's 125 total, right? So 125 times 0 0.18 is 2.5 uh, 2 I guess that makes sense. And then this is 20 and then 0 0.1 times yeah, 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 it makes no. What? Hold on a second. 0 0.1 that would be 2.5. Yeah, 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 120 No, that's right. That's 22.5. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. 22 the first year Eleanor organized a fundraising event, she invited 30 people. For each of the next five years, she invited double the number. So 30, then 60, then 120, then 240, then 480. If F of N is the number of people invited to the fundraiser N years after Eleanor began organizing the event, which of the following statements best describes the function? It is not decreasing, it is increasing. But it is definitely not linear, right? Linear would be going up by 30 every time, and it's definitely not. Exponentiales. Uh, 23. Some values of x and their corresponding values of y are shown in the table above, where a is constant. If there's a linear relationship between x and y, which following equations represents their relationship. So here's the deal. Slope is rise over run, negative a over 2a, which reduces to negative 1 half. So if I were to put this in the slope intercept form, I'd say y equals negative 1 half x plus what's my y intercept? My y intercept, ooh, it's not here. Um, okay, so we're going to have to figure out the y intercept, or we can use point slope. So then I'd say y minus, I'll choose this value, y minus 0 equals 
negative one half times x minus a. So I'm plugging in zero for the y1, a for the x1, if you guys remember point slope. You don't need it. We could have also just used slope intercept form and solved for b. I could have plugged these guys in there as well, but eh, whatever. And then I get y equals distribute negative one half x minus one, or sorry, plus one half a. By the way, they obviously are making us do more work because they're making us put it in standard form. No problem. Add that to the other side. So we get one half x plus y equals one half a. Multiply both sides by two and I get x plus two y equals a. Boom. Yeah. 24. The scatter plot above shows the number of registered voters x. Number of registered voters and the number of people who voted in the last election. So you have 180 and then about half voted. 200, 100. So it looks like about half, right? For seven districts in town, a line of best fit for the data is also shown. Which of the following could be the equation for the line of best fit? So it's got to be a slope of half. It's got to be this. It has to be. Because you plug in 140, you get 70. Plug in 240, you get 120. I mean, it's that. That's it. And I mean, no y-intercepts in any of them, so that's it. 25, the system of equations above is graphed in the xy plane. What is the x-coordinate of the intersection point of the system? First and foremost, I don't like all these decimals. So guess what? I'm going to multiply everything by 10 on top. Multiply everything by 10 on the bottom. Cool. And now we want the x value of the intersection. So I'm going to multiply this bottom one by negative, no, sorry, by positive 3, right? And I get 48x plus 15y equals negative 39. And I get 24x here minus 15y equals 3. Now we just add. I love elimination. It's my favorite. Those become 72x equals negative 36 divided by 70. Sorry. Divide both sides by 72. x equals negative 36 over 72 or negative 1 half. So if x equals negative 1 half, oh, that's it. That's the answer. But we should probably check it. So negative 1 half in here, that's negative 12 minus 15y equals 3. Add negative 12, so it's negative 15y equals 15. y equals negative 1. So I should quickly check. So negative 1 half, negative 12 plus 15 is 3. Negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. All right, we're good. And we want the x coordinate. Cool. 26. Keith modeled the growth over several hundred years of a tree population by estimating the number of trees, pollen, grains per square centimeter that were deposited each year. He estimated that there were 310 pollen grains per square centimeter the first year the grains were deposited with a 1% annual increase in the number of grains per square meter thereafter. Wait, hold on. Okay, he estimated that there weren't this. So my initial value is 310. And then, and then it's, again, remember, rem remember the formula for exponential growth. It's one plus the percentage increase to the T power. Yes, that's annual. Okay, so that's it. 310. It's this guy. Boom. Know that exponential growth formula, my friends. Based on the equation above, what is the value of 3x minus 2? Hmm. What's the best way to do this? I got an idea. No. Mm, I'm trying to find a fast way to do this. Uh, okay, let's just distribute. Two-thirds times nine is six x. Two-thirds of six is four. Minus four equals nine x minus six. Six x minus eight is nine x minus six. Add eight to both sides, that's two. Subtract 9x from both sides, that's negative 3x. Negative 3 divided by negative 3. x equals negative 2 thirds. Boom. All right, we're going to double check. Oh, no, 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 no. They want 3x minus 2. I almost fell for it. 
Okay, so they want three times negative two thirds minus two, which is negative two minus two, which is negative four. It's close. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just think of a faster way to do this. Like, I think I could have, okay, this is what I was trying to do. I could have factored out a three here and I could have been like this. Three, two thirds times three times 3x minus 2, right? Because if you redistribute that, you get that back. So then 2 thirds times 3 is 2. It's 3x minus 2. And then add 4 to both sides equals 9x. Is this even workable? And then this looks crazy now that I think about it. No, this wouldn't work because then I'd get... 3x equals 4.5x minus 1. That doesn't even make sense. So I think what I did was actually good. Let me just make sure I didn't make a mistake. 6x minus 4 minus 4. So 6x minus 8. So then 2 equals negative 3x. So x equals negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds times 3 is negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Okay. It was just the fact that they're not. At, so remember, do that a lot of times. If you do make that mistake, circle the end, especially in the later problems when they're not just straight up asking for x. The function of f is defined above. If k is a positive integer, which of the following could represent the graph of this? All right. So it's got to have one y-intercept at negative 3, which that one does. b does not. C does not, right? That's where it gets confusing, right? When it's plus three, oh, it's a three. No, it's a negative three. It's opposite. So D does, all right. And then it says if K is a positive integer, so that means, and it can't be going down like that, right? Because there's no negative out front. So it's got to be the other one. But K is a positive integer. Let me just make sure that makes sense. Yeah, and then, the, and then it, at the end, it would be three times negative K, because it's, it's, this is positive, so it's minus that. So we should have a negative. First of all, you should have a negative y-intercept, number one, which I think you do down here, and it's got to be going up. So for two reasons, it's D. Okay, that was 28, 29. The formula above can be used to approximate the height and inches of an adult male based on the length L in, of his femur. What is the meaning of 1.88 in this context? Okay, so it's basically this. It's the slope, right? So slope, remember, is rise over run. So what they're saying is for every one inch that the length of the femur grows, the height goes up by 1.88. Now, if this didn't pop out at you, you can make a little table to verify, right? You can say length and height. So you can say length is 0, height is 32.01. Length is 1, it's 1 times 1.88 plus that it, height is now... 33.89. So for every one this goes up, this goes up by 1.88. But that's kind of the approximate increase of a man's femur length in inches for each. In no. Approximate increase of a man. No. Approximate increase in a man's height in inches for each. Yeah, it's this one. And that brings us to 30. In quadrilateral ABCD above, AD is parallel to BC. Mark the diagram if they say that. And CD equals one half AB. So if this is X, this is two X, right? The easier way to put it. Because um, CD is half of that guy. What is the measure of angle B? All right. I remember this one, and I remember we had to do a little ch -ch 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 thingy like this and make these all right angles, right? And that's a right triangle. I remember that, by then I don't remember the rest. Okay, so hold on. What is the measure of angle B? Oh, I remember. Okay. It's a, this is a really hard geometry problem, by the way. But when you start to fill this in, you realize that's X as well. This is a 30, 60, 90. Because only in this type of right triangle where one side is half the hypotenuse, the other side is X root 3. But that doesn't matter because we're just trying to find the angle. We're trying to find this entire angle of B. So if I know that this is 30, I know that this is 60, that's 90. The entire angle of B is 150. 60 plus 90. Boom. But I feel like when I did that the first time, it was really difficult to see that little thing. All right. Lynn has an eight has eight dollars to spend on apples and oranges. Apples cost sixty five cents each and oranges cost seventy five cents each. Let's do a big O for that. There's no tax on the purchase. She buys five apples. 
what is the maximum number of whole oranges she can buy. So she buys five apples. We're trying to solve for O. I should call it X now because whatever. I don't like, that looks like a zero, right? Equals eight. Five times 60 cents is $3.25. 25. Plus 75 cents X equals eight. Subtract 3.25 from both sides. 0.75 X equals 4.75. Doing a lot of mental math is it's dangerous. I don't advise it unless you're super confident. And, and obviously for me, it's more of a teaching experience. Not um, The score doesn't matter. But I'm going to use a calculator here. Actually, wait. It's six. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not exactly six. But I know that six times 75 cents is $4.50. And remember, we need to buy a whole number value of oranges. Four points. It's going to be like six point something. Yep. And so what is the maximum number of oranges she can buy? Six. Boom. Done. Let me reposition my mouse. All right. There we go. 32. And the triangle above A is 34. Remember, what are they referring to? Triangle sum theorem. All the angles in a triangle add up to 180. Now, remember, don't try and solve for B and C individually. We just need what is B plus C. So isolate B plus C, and I get B plus C equals 146. Boom, done. 33. If the mean of the five numbers above is 1,600, what is the value of X? Okay. So mean is, of course, average. So I add these up. One, do, 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 do. And I'd be like, let's see if I can do it mentally. 1,900, 2,900, 3,500, 45, 5,500. Plus X divided by 5 equals 1,600. So that's, right? You add these numbers up. Plus X divided by 5 equals 1,600. I should double check these numbers because if I make a mistake, the whole thing's off and I'll have no idea because we're on free response. Plus. So I think of the multiple choice answers as guideposts. Like you can see if you do make a mistake, you're like, oh, the answer I put isn't there. I must have done something wrong. And you can recalibrate. Multiply both sides by five, and I got 5,500 plus X equals 8,000 minus 5,500 from both sides. And we got X equals 2,500. Boom, done. 34. The relationship between X and Y can be written as Y equals MX, where M is constant. All right. If Y equals 17, when X equals A, so I just plug and chug, what is the value of Y when X equals 2A? Hold on. Uh, what's wrong with me? Hold on. And then, oh yeah. So I guess we isolate and solve for M and I guess M is 17 over a. So what is the value of Y when I'll replace M with 17 over a when X equals two a cancel, cancel 34, I guess. So it's double. Yeah, that makes sense, right? If it's 34. So yeah. Okay. No problemos. In the equation above, A and B are constants. If the equation has in, in the equation above, A and B are constants. If the equation has infinitely many solutions, meaning these two, that, so this is, you got to cut through the nonsense. It means that we need to choose values of A and B where these two sides are both the same. That's when it's infinitely many solutions. What is the value of A? Distribute, distribute. So I get AX plus AB. That means equals 4X plus 10. That means these sync up because they're the X terms and these sync up. So A is of course four, right? It has to be. And then four times what equals 10 divided by four, divided by four, and it's 10 fourths, or we can put it in in reduced format as five halves. Let me just make sure. Yeah. 36, let's look, look at the timer. I think we're like really good for time. Okay, in the XY plane, a line that has the equation, this intersects a, so first of all, that's a horizontal line, right? Oh, it intersects at one point. Oh, snap. Let me back that up, hold on. So it'd be like, boom. If it intersects at one point, it intersects at the vertex, right? If the parabola has the equationes negative, oh, and then it's negative a term, so then it means it goes down, right? Boom. 
and boom. What is the value of C? Basically, what they're saying is what's the Y, what's the y value of the vertex? That's it. So remember that formula that I said was super important. Negative B over 2A. That gives me the X value of the vertex, not the Y, but still it's good. So that's negative 5 over negative 2. So 5 halves is the X value of the vertex. To find the corresponding Y value, I got to plug this into the original equation and see what we get. So it's negative 5 halves squared plus 5 times 5 halves. Okay. So this becomes 25 over 4 negative plus 25 over 2. Uh, that's 50 over 4, right? So negative 25 over 4 plus 50 over 4, which equals positive 25 over 4, which you can enter, or you can do 6.25, either or. Cool. Next, 37. In 37, okay, the peregrine falcon can reach speeds of up to 200 miles per hour while diving to catch prey, making the fastest animal on the planet when in a dive. When it, what is a peregrine falcon's max speed while diving to catch prey in feet per second? Okay, conversion time. 200 miles per one hour. And we need to go to feet per second, right? What is the per Peregrine Falcon's maximum speed? Feet per second. I got you, dude. Yeah. All right. So first I, want, first I want to convert miles to feet. So this is how I do it. I'd say I want to get rid of the miles, so I throw that opposite, and then I want to convert that to feet. So one mile is equal to 5 to 80 feet. Boom, boom. Now we're already in feet. And then I want to convert hours to seconds. Let's do it step by step since I know one hour is 60 minutes boom boom and then i know one minute wait a minute one minute is 60 seconds boom boom now i'm in feet per second you see and now i just got to use my calculator so i'll do times 200 divided by 60 times 60 which is 3600 to the nearest whole number, so 293. You know, and that's, that's uncomfortable when you have decimals and a free response, but it is what it is, and I'm pretty sure that's right. So, if a peregrine falcon dove at its max speed for a half a mile to catch prey, so 200 miles per hour, right? Max speed for a half a mile to catch prey, I'm talking distance, rate, time, so that we might need that formula. So if it's max speed for a half mile, how many seconds would the dive take? Okay, let's do it like this. So distance is a half. The rate is 200. Again, I'm going back to miles per hour, but that's cool because that was in miles per hour. What is the time? Wait. Yeah. But... But this is, and this time, by the way, is going to be in hours because miles per hour is de determined by the rate. But first, I'm not going to worry about that. Divide by 200. 1.5 divided by 200 is 0 0.0025. All right, great. But that's in hours. That doesn't really help me. So how do I turn it into minutes first? Well, it's 0 0.0025 an hour times 60 minutes is 0.15 minutes, and they want it in seconds. So now it's in minutes. Now to get to seconds, I multiply it by 60 seconds, and we got nine seconds. Boom! Let's see where we're at. All right, 14 minutes is bare. We're going to stop the clock and go ahead and grade this thing. Okay. All right, ready? Let's see if I can bring this up so you guys can see the answers here. Two. Oops. All right. Let us begin with the red pen of justice and legendariness. Okay, we've got B A B C C B A B. Sorry, my neck is cramping. B A B C C. Next, we've got six. 
DBCCD. D B C C D. Cool. Next we've got A C C A B. A C C A B. Next we've got sixteen is C D C D C, right? C D C D C, cool. Then we got 21, which is B, D, A, B, A. B, D, A, B, A. Ah, my wrist. 26, we've got D, A, D, D, A. D, A, D, D, A. All right, cool. 31 is 6. 146, 2500, and 34. Next, we got five halves, which is pretty sweet. Next, we've got 25 fourths or 6.25, which is awesome. 293, and for the win, nine. Baller. All right, there we go. Let's take a quick pause and let's see where we at, where, where we are at for the questions and comments. All right, so let's see, everybody. Um, so you guys are talking about studying, um, everything you need to answer English questions. Okay. You guys are talking a little about English. I love the community. By the way, if you guys haven't done so already, I think a lot of you guys are, but join our discord server. The discord server is in the description link below. It's free to join. We got over five, 400 people on there right now. And it's awesome. You can, you can ask each other questions. I know a lot of people have been doing that and been getting a, a lot of value from that. So I highly recommend doing that. 37 and 38. Yeah, so, I mean, look, 37 is what we call dimensional analysis, okay? And when you talk about dimensional analysis, you're just flipping. Like, you want to think about it as a step-by-step -step process. So notice here, first I was like, okay, I've got miles per hour. And the first, my first objective was like, I want to get the miles to feet. So I make sure if I have miles on top, I have miles on the bottom. That allows me to cancel them. And then I want to transition to feet. So then I'm like, all right, well, what value? So I just throw a feet on top of there. And then, I, and then the key is that this ratio right here is equal to one. Then I can do whatever I want because you can multiply anything by one, right? And then once those cancel out, now I'm in feet. Same thing with hours. I got hours over here. So I put hours on the opposite on top. And first I'll transition to minutes. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. That's legal. Allows me to cancel out. Boom. Then I end with minutes and minutes to seconds, and we're done. Um, 38. Honestly, man, this is just straight up using distance equals rate times time. 200 miles per hour equals a distance of 0.5, and then that times T. You solve, and you get your answer. You just get the answer in in, in uh, what's it called, uh, hours. So this is the right answer, but it's like, if you want to do it again, point zero, oops, what am I doing? Point zero zero two five hours, and we want to convert to seconds. So again, be like one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Boom, and then one minute is equal to 60 seconds. You see? And then cancel, 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 and we're in seconds all of a sudden. So you just, then you see you have to multiply by 60 and by 60. <clears throat> so you're asking how many more am I going to do? Well, <clears throat> I've got a few more queued up, but the goal was to, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> let me get a sip of water. <clears throat> The goal is to go for the allotted time period all the way till 1045, a nice six hour stream. I don't know if I can do it realistically, but I'm going to try my hardest. <clears throat> okay. So 30, we'll answer a couple of these. <clears throat> 30 is just about doing this making this line right here and recognizing this piece. This is why you need to know your special right triangles. If you know that one of the hypotenuses 
or sorry, if the hypotenuse is double one of the legs, which it is here, it's 30, 60, 90. Or if I know that this is, if you took square root three times this and you get, you get, um, or sorry, what am I saying? If you multiply the lower leg and you get x square root three for this side, it's a right triangle, you also know it's 30, 60, 90. And then also 30 degrees is always opposite the little guy, the x. So that's kind of, that's kind of how you do it. Um, Got to know those. Okay, 23 and... So this one, I hope you noticed how I calculated slope, right? I basically said the change in the y, which is negative a over the change in the x, which is positive 2a, gives me negative 1 half. Then I used my slope intercept form, and I said y equals negative 1 half x plus b. Now, I could have left here and plugged in these coordinates and solved for b and all that. Instead, I use point slope, which says if I know a point, and I do, y is 0 when a, x is a, and I said y minus the y value of that coordinate times the slope times x minus the x value of that coordinate. And then it gives me the final equation in slope-intercept form. Then I need to put it in standard form. So I added 1 half x to both sides, right? And then I got this equation. And then standard form, we don't want fractions in the mix. So I multiplied everything by 2. And I got this guy. But there's other ways to check this, right? Like you can, look, if I plug in a in for x and zero in for y, it should get a true equation in the right one. Same for 3a, negative a, 5a, negative 2a. So you could have done plug and chug if, if you got, con you know, if this was confusing. Yeah, there's a 30 second delay, I believe. <clears throat> okay, 24. Oh, no, sorry. What am I doing? I'm done. <laughs> okay, we're out of this now. College board practice test 10 is done. So we're going kind of in reverse order here. Yeah, I can't explain completing the square, but I got a video on it. Uh, let me find it, and I'll send it to you. All right, there's my video on completing the square, and, and uh, Catherine, if you're, if you're still watching, so click that link, and uh, it gives you a couple really nice examples. I think that should clear it up really nicely. Yeah, so I'm going to go until another, I think I'm going to go another four hours if I can, if I can handle it. Again, there ha there's an asterisk there because I may get to a point where I literally physically cannot continue, and I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I'm hoping I can tough it out because I want to be a man of my word, but I'm already feeling it a little bit. With that being said, let's get right back into the mix. Let's do some problems, and uh, I'm sure I'll feel better. All right, here we go. Let's keep hydrating. Premium is the only reason why I bought it. Is so I didn't have commercials when I'd play videos for you guys or play videos for my students. I mean, that, that's literally it. <laughs> so it's a business decision. Okay, here we go. No calculator, so goodbye calculator. Timer. We got 25 minutes on the clock. Three, two, one. Let's go. For the system of equations above, what's the value of x plus y? Okay, first I'm going to multiply the top by 2, and I get 4x minus 2y equals 16. Oh, wait, nope, 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 yeah. 4x plus 2y equals 16, then the bottom I keep it the same. Probably don't have to do I bet there's an easy way to do this, but that's okay. 5x equals 20. x equals 4, and if x equals 4... y must equal 0, so 4 plus 0 is 4. Let's just make sure that's right. 4, 0, 4, 0. Boom, done. Yeah. Okay, number 2, which of the following is equivalent to this? Distribute, 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 distribute 2x squared minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 3x. Combine like terms. Combine like terms. 
5x squared minus 5x. Boom, done. All right. Which of the following statement is true about the graph of the equation, this in the xy plane? All right, so first of all, they're asking stuff about slope and y-intercept. I'm going to put this into slope-intercept form. So I'm going to say 2y equals 3x minus 4. Then I'm going to divide everything by 2, and I get 3 halves x minus 2. Negative y-intercept, because that's the y-intercept, right? And a positive slope. Boom, done. Make sure that's right. Yeah. The front of a roller coaster car... <clears throat> is at the bottom of a hill and is 15 feet above the ground. If the front of the roller coaster car rises at a constant speed of 8 feet per second, so that's an 8s, which of the following equations gives the height of the front of the coaster car s seconds after it starts up the hill? I mean, it seems easy, but I think it's just this. I don't know what this is. Where's the 335 coming from? Then it's 15 feet above the ground, so that's the y-intercept, and the front is going at a rate of 8 feet per second. Yeah, that's it. Number five, the equation above gives the amount C in dollars that electrician charges for a job that takes H hours. Mrs. Sanchez, Mr. Roland hired, each hired this electrician. The electrician worked two hours longer on Mrs. Sanchez's jobs than Mr. Roland's. So two hours longer, so let's say if he worked one hour, two hours longer on Sanchez than... Roland. So Roland, let's say he worked one hour, that's 200 bucks. Then it would be three hours, that is 150, 225, 350. And then how much more did the electrician charge Miss Sanchez? 150. But you know that I, I didn't even need to do the example, right? You know it's just the, the difference two times that slope of 75, so extra two hours. Number six, a circle below the center O and length of arc A, A D C. is 5 pi, and x is 100, what is the length of ABC? I mean, I'm telling you guys, this whiteboard is so sweet. Okay, let's straighten that out a little bit. Oops, still bad. All right, it's all good. <laughs> so we've got, here, here's how we can do it. Um, actually, wait a minute. The best way to do it. Okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say 100 over, I'm going to use my arc length formula. That's probably an easier way to do this, but 100 over 360 times my circumference. I'm not even going to solve for 2 pi r and all that stuff. 100 over 360 times circumference equals 5 pi. So that means that's 10 over 36, that's 5 over 18. So if I multiply both sides by 18 over 5, my circumference is 18 pi. All right. So now if I want the outer side, I do 260 over 360 times the circumference. So it's 26 over 36, which is 13 over 18 times 18 pi, and it's 13 pi. Oops, numero seven. That was pretty hard for number six, I think, but there might be an easier way to do that. What is the value of x? Multiply both sides by x, boom, boom. 8 equals 160x, divide by 160, and I get, um, what is that? Is that 1 over 20? God, I'm getting a little sleepy. 1 over 20 is x, which is 0.05. It's the only one that's a decimal, so we're good to go there. Numero 8, in the equation above, A is a constant if no value of x satisfies the equationes. Okay, what does that mean? That means that the x's are going to match up and these are going to be different. Okay, it's kind of like this. x plus 2 equals x plus 3. No value will satisfy this. If I plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, there's always going to be one more. That's what it means. Again, cut through the nonsense of what they're trying, what, what are they really asking? Otherwise, you might spend all day plugging stuff in. So I've got 2ax minus 15 equals on the other side. Boom, 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 boom. 3x plus 15 plus I'm going to put it down here, 5x minus 5, that becomes 8x plus 10 equals 2ax minus 15. So if a is 4, I'll have 8x minus 15, 8x plus 10, they'll never equal each other. Boom, done. Number 9, 
A system of three equations is graphed in the plane above. How many solutions does the system have? Okay, so this is where all three intersect, right? So there's one equation or one line. There's, whoops, two, and here is three. And all three, it seems like, only intersect at one point, right? They, two of them intersect there, two of them intersect there, but only point where they all three intersect is right there, so there's only one solution. System of two equations would be where the two intersect, right? Number 11 is or 10. The equation above is true for all x, where a and b are constants. What is the value of a, b? So this is a true equation, which means both sides are equivalent. So what I'm going to do is distribute and then match up the like parts. Boom, boom, boom. So I get 5ax cubed minus abx squared plus 4ax. Um, I like to stack like this. I don't know if you do, but it makes it easier for me. Minus 3bx plus 12. Combine like terms, 5ax cubed. Um, I guess I'm going to factor out the x squared, and it becomes 15 minus ab. You see what I'm saying as I'm grouping these guys? Just trying to skip a, skip a couple steps. And then plus x times 4a minus 3b. Factor that. And then plus 12. So you can see the 12 matches up there. That's nice. 15 minus AB. So hold on. 5A matches up with 20. So A is, of course, 4. Then I've got 15 minus AB matches up with negative 9. And then I subtract 15 from both sides. And I got. And by the way, A is 4. So it's negative 4B equals negative 24 divided by negative 4. Oh, I don't even need this. I just wanted the value of AB, but that's okay. We already have it, but B is 6. So AB is 4 times 6, which is 24. But you see when you when you come back to this, um, 15, mm, yeah, 15 minus 24 is negative 9. So there you go. Number 11. Which of the following represents all possible values of x to satisfy the equation above? Now, again, you can plug and chug. See what happens, right? Uh, zero seems to work because if I plug in zero, I get zero over negative three equals zero over two. Um, I normally don't do it like this. I usually cross multiply, but figure why not? And then plug in two, it's two over negative one equals four over two. That's out. So it's got to be four. Four over one equals eight over two. Yeah. But normally I'd cross multiply. I'd be like two X equals two X squared minus six X. And then it'd be two X squared minus 8x equals 0, and then you factor out a 2x, and you get x minus 4. So you get the two solutions, 0 and 4, and you're good. Oops, I didn't circle it. Okay, we've got number 12. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above for x? Okay. So there's two ways you can do this. This is a synthetic division problem, really, and um, but I'm not going to do it that way. So all of these are over 2x plus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that one there, but I'm going to give this a common denominator. I'm going to add these guys. Distribute, distribute. I get 10x plus 5 plus 1 over 2x plus 1. Combine, and I get 10x plus 6 over 2x plus 1, and that's it. Now, if you want to divide this using synthetic division, you can, and your answer is going to be 5 with a remainder of one, and that's why the one throw is laying on top of the divisor. But it, I think my the method I did is a lot easier. 13, the graph of the function f in the xy plane above is a parabola. Which of the following defines f? All right, so first of all, we need x minus 3, not plus 3, because it's a positive 3. You're out, and you're out. And then these are both the right. So the vertex is right there. Now the question is, is it 4 or 3? All right, now we're going to do a little plug and chug. I'm going to plug in... 4 to this one. So we should get 5. 4 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So this is the winner. Just to double check, if I plug in 4 here, I get 1. 1 squared is... Oh, this one doesn't even have anything in front of it, so it's got to be wrong. But I get 1 plus 1 is 2. Same thing if I plug in 2 here, I'd get 2, not 5. 13 is the winner.
in which of the following shaded region represent in which of the following does the shaded region represent the solution set the xy plane to the system of inequalities all right So let's turn this into slope intercept form first. 3y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 6. y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 2. And so y is greater than or equal to x plus 2. This is out because here, look, here is x plus 2, and it should be above that, and it's below that. Um, this is above, and then it should be this is below. This might be the winner here. But it's a y intercept of two. That's right. Slope of negative two thirds down. Boom. Yeah. So it's, I think it's B. Oh yeah. And all the lines are the same. So we can quickly see C is greater than X plus two. That's right. But then it's also greater than, cause you see it's above both and see that one's supposed to be less than. And then D is totally wrong because it's, it's less than X plus two. So we already know that one's out. Okay. 15. What is the set of all solutions to the equationes? All right. First, let's square both sides, and we get x plus 2 equals x squared. Subtract x, subtract 2 equals 0. And then we're going to factor, factor, and I get x minus 2 plus 1 because that multiplies to negative 2 adds to negative 1. So theoretically, my solution should be 2 and negative 1. But we have to plug both back in in these equations and only take the positive root. Don't take the negative root. If they both work, great. If not, we'll figure out which one's good. 2 would be 2 plus 2 squared equals negative 2 square root of, that would be 4. Square root of 4 is 2, negative 2. 2 is out. Does not work. Goodbye, goodbye. Now, it could be negative 1. Let's see. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. And then negative negative 1 is also 1. So that works. Boom, done. Negative 1, yeah. Numero 16, oh, oops, sorry. Let me move that back. What is the volume in cubic centimeters of a right rectangular prism? So what's that? Let's see if I draw a box. You guys can see what this is all about. I wonder if you can do anything cool. I don't know. Let's not get too fancy. Yeah, that's the only thing is like the straight line function in this is a little weird, so I'm just going to hand draw it. So it's the volume of, of a right rectangle prism that's a length of four, a width of nine, and a height of ten. Doesn't matter which goes where. So what is the volume? Length times width times height. Nine times four is three six times ten is three sixty. Make sure I didn't make any mistakes. So it's free response. All same units, and we're good to go. So though they don't really do that to you, they'll they try not to sneak the unit changes by you generally. Four x plus two. If x is what is the value? Look, they're asking for two x plus one, not x, right? Very important. But I'm gonna do a shortcut. I'm gonna divide both sides by two, and I'll literally get two x plus one equals two, and we're done. X is of course one half. Not that that matters, but yeah. Eighteen. And the figure above shows a complete graph of the function f in the x y plane. The function g is defined by g of x equals. So this is f of x. G equals this plus 6. So it would be shifted up by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can't even draw it. Okay. Well, the maximum value of F is 2. So the maximum value of G would be 8 because you're adding 6. So I guess that's it. All right, 19. Triangle PQR. Ooh, now we get into some tricky stuff here. I don't know how to make a right triangle. That's the problem. Um, what if I move this? Oh, boy. I don't know what that is. Get you out of there. Uh, is there any other way I can do it? Hmm. Okay, let's try the smart draw tool. This is kind of interesting thing, but I don't think it'll work. Yep, turns into that. Okay, so that's a small glitch I'm noticing with this in terms of the shapes. I can't get a right triangle. See, that's a connection line. What's this? Is this just a regular line? No, see, I don't think that's what we want. All right, it's all good. So we got one, two, three. We got the right angle. Has a right angle, it's Q. P and R, or it doesn't matter. 
if sine of r is four fifths, which means opposite is on top and the hypotenuse is five. And this is a three, four, five. If you know your Pythagorean triples, three, four, five. What is the value of tangent of P that's opposite over adjacent three fourths? I think we're assuming it's in the first quadrant. Well, it's a triangle, so whatever, we're good. And it's three fourths, let me just make sure. Sine of R is four fifths. What is tangent of P? Three over four, boom, done. Numero 20. We got eight and a half minutes to spare and we're good to go. The graph of the linear function F is shown in the XY plane. The graph of the linear function G is perpendicular and passes through the point uno trace. And I'll actually draw it. Ah, oh, I don't have the straight line to it. Okay. Normally I would draw, make a nice drawing, but if it's perpendicular, it means, so this is a slope of negative two over one. So the res negative reciprocal of that is positive one half. So it's down one to the right two. Just for fun, we can kind of draw it. I don't know if we need to, but let's just do that. What is the value of G <clears throat> of zero? Well, it looks like it's 2.5. But we're gonna get we're gonna figure it out for sure. So first of all, we know we have a slope of one half, and I know I have a, a point at one three. So I can use point slope again. Y minus three equals one half times x minus one, and we distribute distribute, and I get y, and we add three, so one half x minus one half, and then I'll plus three. So y equals one half x plus two and a half or two point five. And that's basically what it's asking. G of zero is the y-intercept. It's that number, and we're good. All right, that's it. That's time for reviewing the answers. Let's go ahead and hit stop. Okay, let's load the next one up. That is... <clears throat> oh, what? Wrong thing. Do, 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 let's zoom out. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. So numero uno, we got B-A-D-A-C. B-A-D-A-C, sweet. Numero six, we've got... <clears throat> B, D, C, B, C, B, D, C, B, C. Number 11 O's, we've got B, D, A, B, 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 D, A, um, B, B, sweet. 14 and 15, and then 16 we got 360, 17 we got 2, 18 we got 8, 19 we got 3 fourths, baller, and we got 2.5 for the win. All right, let's check it out here. Let's see what people are saying. What's going on? Uh, Emperor Palpatine, good luck. What? What's happening? I love Star Wars. Yeah, I do have a Discord, guys. It's in the Descriptiones link. You can, uh, it's free. And it's awesome. The people are on there are amazing. Join my Discord server. Math problem I do, I always freeze. Oh, wow, Emperor Palpatine. That's a legendary name. I actually love that character. I'm not going to lie. Hey, what's up from DACA? Pretty cool. I love seeing all the people from all over the world. Henry Ramirez, clap, clap. Uh, 16, 18, and 20, we will do. 16, 18, and 20, hold on, let me shut my blinds. It's dark out now. I don't even think, just keep them open. All right, <clears throat> 16 and 14. All right, I'll start with 14. So 14, 16, and 18. Look, 14 is a really hard problem, but the main, the most important thing that you wanna remember in 14 is you want to get this one into slope intercept form. That's the key. And then the thing is, all these are, they, they graph the right lines in every case. So that makes it a little trickier. But once you get this and you know your sh it says less than, I used to have a hard time with these problems, but really this is 
you know, the less the negative two thirds plus two is this. And the other one is the blue one. And so since it says greater than x plus two, you shade above it. Since it says below negative two thirds plus two, you shade below that one. And that's it. It's just up or down. And that's, that's how you do it. That's the intersection. Perpendicular line might or might not have the same y-intercept. It depends. It's not, it, it, it can depend. Okay, 16 was just straight up volume, right? I made a cute, the rectangular prism is a box. That's all it is, if, you, if you're not familiar with that term. And it says, and by the way, I just allocated this randomly. Like, I could have put the 9 here and the 10. It doesn't matter. But it says, hey, three dimensions, 9, 4, and 3. Nine, sorry, 9, 4, and 10. To get the volume, you multiply them. That's it. 18, you, so g of x is just this graph shifted up by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it will look the exact same, just shifted up vertically. And so if the max here is 2, the max here is 8, 6 up, and that's it. Hey, man, thank you for that. We're trying to give more subscribers. Thank you for the support, though. I appreciate it. You being here is helping me. And me being here hopefully is helping you, so it's win-win. Okay, number 20, the graph of the linear function shown uh, is perpendicular. So again, perpendicular means it forms that nice right angle. You see that? And again, you didn't need to draw that out, and I, I could kind of figure it out, but you didn't need that. The main key is that since this has a slope of negative 2, down 2 over 1, the perpendicular line will have a slope of 1 half. And since we already know a point, we can plug it into point slope, get the equation, and then plug zero into this equation. But since it's there, when x is zero, it's just the y-intercept, and you're good to go. Uh, GeoGuessr, that is amazing. So Maria, did that make sense? GeoGuessr, it, that is so amazing. And if, by the way, if you do want to be part of one of my testimonials, which we're getting more and more testimonials, is so cool, uh, let me know. Yeah, email me at Huzefit. Actually, you can email me at this email address down below, tutoring at scalarlearning.com or Huzefit at scalarlearning.com, and, and that's that. We'll set it up. All right. Coffee sip. Sure, I'll do one more. Number six, and then I'll move on. Yeah, number six, this was hard. Okay, let me see if I can do it a different way that's easier. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, here's how I could have done it. Just thought of this with a proportion. I could have done 5 pi to 100 degrees equals x, which is what we're trying to solve for, to 260. Just a proportion like that. That would have been golden, right? It's the length to the degrees, length to the, to the degrees, cross, cross. 5 times that is a 1,300 pi equals 100x, and then you divide by 100, boom, boom, and it's 13 pi. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. You're welcome, Maria. Emperor Palpatine gives me the role of emperor. Incredible. And December International. Yeah, you guys have been asking me that. I, I might do it. I don't know if it was officially released, though, and that's my hesitation. I don't really want to be doing too many of these unreleased. Um, okay, number six is very difficult, I agree. But you see, what I just had to think about it a little more. It's much easier that way with a proportion. Yeah. Uh, radians, I mean, it is and it isn't. Actually, I didn't even use, ra I didn't use radians here. I used degrees. I mean, you could do it in radians, but it's not asking. It doesn't matter. Because if you're going to use radians, you got to convert 100 to radians, right? So I wouldn't really even go, go that route personally. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Number one for test four, or uh, section four. It is now 6.45. We've been in the mix for two hours, ladies and gentlemen. And please give me a like. Please hit that like button if you haven't done so yet. As I'm starting to feel the effects of the marathon a little bit on my mind, like would help me out. Spruce me up a little bit. De nada, de nada, Henry. Okay, here we go. We're going to go to the calculator. 
We're going to reset it. We're going to go to 55 minutes. And we're going to start in three, two, one. Let's begin. Well, value of x satisfies this, minus 3, minus 3, 3x three equals 24, x equals 8, boom, done. Plug it back in, 24 plus 3 is 27, yeah. Two units of length used in ancient Egypt were cubits and palms, where one cubit is equivalent to seven palms. I'm already feeling a proportion. The great syntax here gives it approximately 140 cubits long, which is the best approximation, approximates the length in palms. Boom, cross, cross, x equals... 980. Oh. Sorry, I, have, I thought I had to do not disturb on here. Come on, bro. All right. Next. Maybe I need to turn it on for up here. Okay. If 2n over 5 equals 10, what is the value of 2n minus 1? Hold on. Let me do one other thing. Let me just turn off. Um, oh, I don't want to pop that up though. Hold on one sec. Let's bring this down here. Let's disable this. Boom. Hopefully then we won't get disturbed by anything. All right, there we go. So if 2n over 5... 2n over 5 equals 10. What is the value of 2n minus 1? Multiply both sides by 5. 2n equals 50. n equals 25. Oh, and we want 2n minus 1. So then 2 times 25 minus 1 is 49. Let's just make sure that's right. Yeah, perfect. Next is number 4. Which of the following values of x is not a solution to the equation above? Okay. Uh, it's got to be negative four, because this is yeah. Th this is this is essentially absolute value. Square root of square, something squared is the same. Okay, number five. Question six, five and six refer to the following information: temperature of a cup of coffee during an experiment. Okay, if an ex in an experiment, a heated cup of coffee is removed from a heat source, and the cup of coffee is then left in a room that is kept at a constant temperature. It looks like the constant temperature is right here, like seventy something. The graph above shows the temperature in degrees of the coffee immediately after being removed from the heat source and at 10 minute intervals. Of the following, which best approximates the temperature in degrees of the coffee when it's first removed from the heat source? 190 something. Because that's right at time zero. During which of the following 10 minute intervals does the temperature of the coffee decrease at the greatest average rate? Zero and 10. Because look, the drop is very significant. And then boop, boop, and then it gets more gradual. All right, C of one. In the figure above, AD intersects BE at C. If X equals 100, what is the value of Y? Okay, 100, 120, 60, and then that's 60. 60, 40, and then Y is 80. And we are good to go. Little puzzle action, basically. All right. Number eight, the line graphed in XY plane below models the total cost in dollars for a cab ride Y in a certain city during non-peak hours based on the number of miles traveled X. So that's the cost based on the distance. So it sounds like no matter what, you got to pay three bucks and then one mile you pay five. So it's, it looks like two bucks per mile. According to the graph, what is the cost for each of it? It's two bucks. That's it, right? Just make sure the increments are good. Two, 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 two. All right. No, I'm just sorry it just seemed too quick. <laughs> On Tuesday, a local gas station had 135 customers. The table above summarizes whether or not the customer on Tuesday purchased gasoline, a beverage, both or neither. And 35 customers. The table above summarizes whether or not the customers on Tuesday purchased gasoline, purchased gasoline, a beverage, both or neither. So yes, gasoline, yes, beverage, and that's both. 
What? Okay, based on the data on the table, what is the probability that a gas station that a gas station customer selected at random on that day did not purchase? Based on the data on the table, what is the probability that a gas station customer did not purchase gasoline? Fifty out of one thirty-five, I believe, which reduces to ten over twenty-seven. No, no. Oh, didn't reduce it. Good. Uh, it's just 50 over 35. Hold on. Let me think about that for a second. <clears throat> what is the probability that gas station customers select like that random on that day? Yeah, did not purchase gasoline. It's 50 out of 135. All right. Now we come to the bottom. Do, 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 do. Here we go. 10. Washington High School randomly selected freshmen, sophomore, junior, and senior students for a survey about a potential change to next year's schedule. Of students selected for the survey, one-fourth were freshmen, and uno-thirdo were sophomores. Half of the remaining selected students were juniors. So that is one-fourth. So common denominators would be... So the remaining is five twelfths. Half of those, which is five twenty fourths, are juniors. Oh, then we got seniors too. Okay, and then hold on. So then that's six eight. It's six twenty fourths, right? Because this would be eleven twenty fourths. No, 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 no. What did I do wrong? Hold on. Eight. Fourteen. Hold on. Fourteen. So it's also five twenty fourths. Wait a minute. Oh no, half. Yeah. No, that's also five twenty fourths, of course. Because they said Half of the remaining students were juniors, so the other half is that. So 5 24ths, 5 24ths plus, that would be 6 plus 8. That adds up to 24 24 So how many were seniors? Same as juniors, right? So 5 24 is a calculator now. 5 24 times 336. The 70. Okay, so let's make sure that's right. 70. 70. One third is 112, right? And then one fourth is 84. Let's make sure that adds up. 140, 224, 324, 336. Yeah, cool. 11. Plant A is currently 20 centimeters tall. Plant B is currently 12 centimeters tall. Plant B is 12, and the ratio of plants A to B is equal to the ratio of plants C to D. So again, as I'm reading, I'm putting it into an equation of some sort. If plant C is 54, what is the height of D? And we got our proportion, and we can cross multiply and solve. I could reduce, but whatever. We got a calculator. So 54 times 12 is 648. Divide by 20. Thirty-two point four. Let's just make sure that's right. It's equal to C to D. So yeah, and it makes sense, right? Like D should be smaller. So it's either that or B, but I think that makes sense. Twelve. Biologists found a new species of sh pale shrimp at the world's deepest undersea vent, the B vent. The vent is 3.1 miles below the sea surface. Okay. Approximately how many kilometers below the sea surface is the vent? Oh, just conversion. So 3.1, you could do it like this. equals one kilometer to 0.6214 and then cross multiply. So it, you end up getting 0.6214 equals 3.1. Uh, sorry, 
0.6214 x equals that, and then divide by 0.6214, right? Is about five, and that makes sense. That's like I shouldn't have known that, but that's like a what I used to run in cross country, a three point one race, which is five k. For those of you cross country people, a cargo helicopter delivers only one hundred pounds pound packages and one hundred twenty pound packages. For each delivery trip, the helicopter must carry at least ten packages. And this will be the hundo, and this will be the 120. And the total weight of the packages can be at most 1,100 pounds. Oh, carry at least. Sorry. And the total weight of the packages must, can be at most 1,100 pounds. What is the maximum number of 120-pound packages that the helicopter can carry per trip? I guess we just plug and chug. So we're, we're trying to solve for why. And we just pretend it's equal, right? Because we're trying to find the max. So let's just say y equals 10 minus x. And then I'm going to substitute. 100x plus 1200x plus 1100. And then 100x plus 1200 minus 120x equals 1100. Negative 20x. Equals negative 100, right? I'm subtracting 1,200 from both sides, and I got x equals 5. Um, boom. And that, that, to me, makes sense, right? You've got 600 of those, and then you can do five of those, right? And then you got your 1,100. Like, if we did – uh, sorry. If we did six of these, that's 720, but we need at least four of these, that's going to be over. So that makes sense. 13, 14. A company purchased a machine valued at 120K. The value of the machine depreciates by the same amount each year so that after 10, okay, a company purchased a machine valued at 120K. The value of the machine depreciates by the same amount each year so that after 10 years, it's at 30 grand. So that's nine grand a year, right? Because 10 times that is 90 and then it would be down to 30. And that's it, 120,000 minus. It's this guy. Plug in 10, you get 30. Plug in 10 here, you get 210. 10 here, you get negative 180. 10 here, you get negative 60. So, 15, line M in the XY plane contains the point 24 and 0, 1. Which is, okay, point slope. Oh, actually, not even point slope. We got the Y intercept. So, calculate the slope. I, this is how I do it stack it and subtract down. 4 minus 1 is 3, or 2 minus 1 is 2. So, slope of 3 halves. And a y intercept of 1, and we are good to go. And the expression above a is a constant. If the expression is equivalent to bx, where b is a constant, what is the value of b? The expression is equivalent to b. Okay. Mm, distribute, I guess, and then simplify. So then I get 4ax squared minus 4x plus 4ax minus 4, right? Boom. Let me just make sure that's right. Minus x squared plus 4. These cancel. And this whole thing is equivalent to bx, which means these guys have to cancel. Right? So that means a equals 1 fourth for those to cancel. And that means negative 4x plus 4 times 1 fourth x equals bx. 4 times 1 fourth is x minus 4x plus that is negative 3x equals bx. b equals negative 3. Boom, done. That's it. Okay, let me just make sure a is 1 fourth. So now let's go back to the original a is 1 fourth. 1 fourth x. x squared, that cancels out. Negative 4x, positive x. Minus 4, the x squareds are gone, plus 4, boom, and that's negative 3x. Yeah, it's negative 3, cool. 17, if that equals 14 and that equals, what is the value? 2w plus 3t, 2w plus 4t equals 14, 4w plus 5t equals 25. Now, can we solve individually? Probably by doubling this, by m times this by negative 2. Is there an easier way? 
I don't think so. Negative 2. Maybe there is, but I missed it. 4W minus 8T. But classics are good sometimes, right? Classic strategy. Boom, I got negative 3T equals negative 3. T equals uno. Plug it back in. 2W plus 4 times 1 is 4 equals 14. 2W equals 10. W equals 5. So what is 2W plus 3 times T? 10 plus 3 is 13. All right, Jennifer bought a box of crunchy grain cereal. The nutrition facts on the box state the serving size of cereal is three fourths cup, provides 210 calories, 50 of which are calories from fat. In each, in addition, each serving of the cereal provides 180 milligrams of potassium, which is five percent of daily allowance. Got it. A lot of info. If p percent of an adult's daily allowance, so p percent, since it's a percent, we can convert it to a decimal equivalent like that percent of an adult's daily allowance of potassium is provided by x servings of crunchy grain cereal wait a minute so p percent of an adult's daily allowance is x times wait a minute So, no, sorry, forget this. P percent is provided by X servings, and for each serving, we get 5%. So, P equals 5X, right? Yeah, it's this. Because this will be 50, that doesn't even make sense. These are exponential, that doesn't make sense. So, right, if you did 10 servings, that's 50%. All right, 19. On Tuesday, Jennifer will mix crunchy grain cereal. Crunchy grain cereal with super grain cereal for her breakfast. Super grain provides 240 calories per cup. Three fourths is 210, by the way. That means a full cup of crunchy grain would be, divide that by three and times it by four, it'd be 280. Because that means. One, sorry, one fourth is 70. Two fourths is 140. Three fourths is 210. Four fourths is 280. All right, so super grain, crunchy grain. Total number of calories in one cup of Jennifer's mixture is 270. How much super grain cereal is in one cup of the mixture? Okay, so we got. We've got X amount of 240 plus one minus X because it's a combined thing of uh, one, you know, one times 280 equals 270. And then we shall say 240 X plus 280 minus 280 X equals 270. And then it's negative 40 X subtract 280 from both sides is negative 10. Divide both sides by negative 40, x equals 1 fourth. And that was, which one was x? x was the super grain. So 1 fourth super grain. Let's just double check that. So 1 fourth of super grain would be 60. 3 fourths of crunchy grain would be 210, and that's 270. Boom, done. Number 20, which of the following could be the graph of the number of calories from fat? Oh, one more question on this. Uh, which of the following could be the graph of the number of calories from fat? Fat in crunchy grain is a function of the number of three-fourths cups. Okay, fat in crunchy grain. So 50, 50 calories per three-fourths cup. 50. Why would it have a y-intercept? That doesn't make sense, right? It should start, you have zero cups, you have no fat. So that's what that looks like to me. To make sure I read it right. Function of the number of three fourths cups serving. Yeah. Why would it decrease? Why would it stay flat? Yeah, but cool. 21. The graph of the exponential function h in the xy plane where y equals h of x is y intercept of d. Remember, exponentiales goes like this. 
we graph the exponential function h in the xy plane y equals h equals y intercept of d which of the following could define h okay so the y intercept is when x equals zero so d is the front value out out why would three be there it doesn't even make sense they didn't mention a three um yeah it's it's d because <clears throat> This isn't even an exponential function. This is a cubic function. So it's only these two are exponential. But again, if I plugged in zero here, it would go through negative three. And this is not the y-intercept. Think about it. You plug in zero, you're going to have D because three to zero is one and you're good to go. 22, the weights in pounds for 15 horses in a stable were reported and the mean, median, range, standard deviation were found. The horse with the lowest reported weight was found to actually weigh 10 pounds less than its reported weight. So lowest is actually lowest minus 10. What value remains unchanged if the four values are reported using the corrected weight? So 15 horses, we got all these other ones are left, whatever. Let's pretend it's four, four, 15, doesn't matter. Um, the median is definitely not gonna change. The mean definitely will change. The range obviously will increase by 10. And the standard deviation, the spread will increase, so it's only the median. Because the middle is still going to be the middle, and that's what the median is. Near the end of the U.S. cable news show, the host invited viewers to respond to a poll on the show's website. Asked, do you support the new federal policy discussed? At the end of the show, the host reported that 28 responded yes and 70% responded no. Which of the following best explains why the results are unlikely to represent the sentiments of the population of the United States? So immediately, I like to answer these before looking at the choices. So I say, hey, what, you know, what's wrong with this? So... U.S. News Cable Show, and why doesn't it on? Because okay, you generally these news cable shows, right? I think there's an implication that it's either right wing or left wing. It's going to attract a certain audience that's going to already have a viewpoint. It's probably going to align with the host, sort of like a Bill O'Reilly type of type of show, right? So I don't think it's representative that way. It's not about adding up to a hundred percent. That's irrelevant. Those who responded to the poll were not a random sample. Yes. There were not 50% yet. No, that doesn't make any sense. No. So it's B. It's not a random sample. There's a bias. Whatever the bias is, there's a bias. It's people who watch the show, right? Okay, then we got this. What is the value of A? So this equals this and F of X plus A. So what they did is when they basically plug this in for X, they get this. So I'm going to say 5 times X plus A squared minus 3 equals that. So let's FOIL that inside first. Remember, it's x plus a times x plus a, which is x squared plus 2ax plus a squared minus 3. We're going to distribute, and I get 5x squared plus 10ax plus 5a squared minus 3. This is, first of all, a equals 3 because it matches up with the x term, right? Um, so a equals 3. So then 5, oh, that's it. Cool. Let's just make sure that's right. 9, 45, 42. Yeah, we're good. 25, if sine of A, X equals A, which of the value must be true for the values of X? Now, this goes back to a very simple rule that they test all the time. If sine of X equals A, cosine of Z complement also equals A. Boom, done. But if you don't believe this, right, you can draw out a triangle and be like, here's X, and the hypotenuse would be 1. Sine is opposite over adjacent. Cosine of what's 90 minus X? That's this angle, right? Because these guys, this is a right angle. These guys are complements. So cosine of 90 minus X is, again, adjacent over hypotenuse. It's the same. <clears throat> the quadratic function... <sighs> the quadratic function above models the height above the ground H in feet of a projectile X seconds after it begun been launched vertically. If H e Y equals H is a graph in the XY plane, which of the following represents the real life meaning of the positive X intercept of the graph. Okay. Just know that what this is, is it goes like this. The vertex would be the highest point. The positive X intercept is right there. That's when this thing hits the ground. Boom. That's it. It hits the ground at this time because this is time going this way and this is height. 
So that would be when it hits the ground. That's it. Draw it out if you're confused. But that's all they're testing. What's the max height? What's the starting height? When does it hit the ground? Three things. When it's a projectile like that in a quadratic. In the XY plane, the graph of the polynomial functiones crosses the X. In the XY plane, the graph of the polynomial, func polynomial function F crosses X in exactly two points. So maybe like that. I don't know. At exactly two points, A0 and B0. Okay. I don't even know why I drew it. And A or B are both positive. Okay, well, whoops, that was supposed to be over here. So let's just do it like that. A0, and that will be B0. Which of the following could define F? Um, this one. Oh, all their, t wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the difference between this and this? That crosses the x axis at exactly two points, a0 and b0. So that means it has to zero out at a and b, right? And if they're positive, it doesn't, e hold on. So when x equals a, zero, x equals b, zero, why do they have this other x? Oh, this would give you a zero at zero, but it says it cross exactly two points. So it cannot, it cannot be D because of that extra X. Sorry. If Y equals three X squared plus six is a graph in the, whoops. Sorry about that. What is happening? How do I get rid of that? If y equals that is graphed in the xy plane, which the following characteristics of the graph is displayed as a constant or coefficient in this equation. Boom, y-intercept, doo-doo. So that's what they're asking. When it's in standard form, the only thing you can see from the constants is the y-intercept. When it's in this format, you know, there's an a there, right? But you can see as constants the vertex, but it's not there. This is, and it, again, if you plug in zero for X, it zeroes out. That is the Y intercept. That's the definition of it. The value of Y when X equals zero. 29 minimum wage. The scatter plot above shows the federal mandated minimum wage every 10 years between. So I'm just going to put this in turn because I made a mistake like this on a recent test. It's 1950, 1960, 1970. So I don't make a mistake later and be like, oh, that's 1950. You know what I'm saying? 1990, 2000, 2010, 2020. A line of SFIT shown. So this is minimum wage rising, right? What does the line of SFIT predict? about the increase in minimum wage over the 70 year period. That it goes up about 15, let's say. That's 60. Uh, 5.20 and that's 15 comma 1 so it goes up 420 every 45 years I don't know what is 420 divided by 45 93 9 cents Yeah, I think it's this. <clears throat> the average increase in minimum wage was 49 cents. Um, no, that, that can't be right. That's way too high, right? No, wait, 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 wait. Each year. Oh, wait a minute. No, yeah, yeah, each year. Yeah, because that's a lot, right? Then here it would go up $5, and it didn't. So I think the gra I think writing out the coordinates is helpful here. No. No, because this wouldn't make sense because that's nine cents. This is basically 10 cents. 
So that would mean from here to here it only goes up ten cents, but it looks like it goes up like a, a dollar in ten years. Ten years. No, fifty cents. No. In ten years, it goes every ten years. It looks like it goes up about a dollar. So yeah. All right, I think we got it. It's a hard question. I mean, it's like it's just kind of confusing to me, but. The scatter plot above shows a company's ice cream sales D in dollars and a high temperature T in Celsius. So this makes sense, right? You're going to make more money when it's hotter out. More people want ice cream. A line of best fit is also shown. Which of the following could be an equation of the line of best fit? Okay. Let's plot two points. Uh, what would be two good easy points to plot? What is this? Let's just say 11, 450. And 25, comma, 920. Uh, 470, negative over negative 14. What's 470 divided by 14? Thirty three. So you're out, you're out. It's a slope of 33. And the Zin, the Y intercept. Well, now let's plug and chug. I mean, I can, like, you know, I, I, I can draw this back and figure it But all we got to do is plug in 11 and know we should get, like, 450. And this is not the one. No, this is the one. 33 time, oops, times 11 plus 84 is about 450. That's what we predict. So it's this guy. And again, this makes sense because 10. So here would be, I'm going to just try and draw it out 10. Then here would be like eight. So it's going below 306, you know, whatever. Um, can't say for sure, but it must get to 84. Again, if I plug in, just even plug in 10 here and it's 330, you get 630. It doesn't make sense. All right, we made it to the free response. Now we see a nice reset, hopefully in difficulty. In the XY plane above the circle center, HK and radius 10. Let's draw in that radius. Connected to those two points. What is the value of K? Actually, does it even matter? I think... Oh, well, so hold on. The value of H is in between these two, right? Yeah, because that's the center and it's got to be perfectly symmetric. So that is 16 apart, 8, 12. So it's 12 comma 0, right? And then if that's 12, 0, so this is 10 by 8 by 6. It's 6. Here's why. This is really a 3, 4, 5, or 6, 8, 10 right triangle. So we kind of know that this has to be 6. But if you didn't know that, you can use Pythagorean's theorem. 100 minus 64 equals 36. Square root that, and you get 6. So that's the height. It's h. It's 12, 6 is the center. In the xy plane, line L has a y-intercept of negative 13, and it's perpendicular to this, which means it has a slope of positive 3 over 2. Boom, I got my equation already. If the point 10B is on line L, what is the value of B? Plug and chug. So Y equals 3 halves times 10 minus 13. That's 5. 5 times 3 is 15 minus 13. That's 2. Cool. 50 or 33. Human blood can be classified in four common blood types. A, B, A, B, A, B, O. It's also characterized by the... Someone turning on my heating pad. My feet are freezing. It is also characterized by the presence of plus minus the rhesus factor. The table above shows the distribution of blood type and rhesus factor for a group of people. <sighs> okay. If one of these people who is rhesus negative, if, if one of these people who is rhesus negative, so we're in this category already, is chosen at random, the probability of the person has blood type B is one ninth which is two out of 18. Well, that means, so it's if, so they said, if somebody who's rhesus negative, so we're limiting the set, right? If one of these people who's rhesus negative is chosen at random, so we're limiting it to that, 
the probability that their blood type B is one out of nine. So two out of 18 is the same as one out of nine. That means there's a total of 18 people down here. And that means seven plus two plus three is 10 plus X. X has to be eight. Let's draw it down here so I can see it when I check. All right, 34. Number of goals scored by a soccer team in 29 games. Based on the graph above, in how many of the games played did the soccer team score goals equal to the median number of goals for the 29 games? How many of the games played did the soccer team score goals equal to the median? So first of all, what is the median? So we got eight, nine, six, two, and one. All right, so the number of goals. So we got eight ones, nine twos, 29 games, right? So first of all, where's the middle gonna occur? Because it's already ordered from least to greatest. So 29 is going to have 14 on one side, 14 on the other, and then the one in the middle. So <clears throat> we're talking about the 15th value. The 15th value is going to occur in here. So there's the median is two, but that's not the answer. They said, how many games did they score goals equal to the median? And that's nine. 35. Gisela would owe 15500 in taxes each year. She were not eligible for any tax deductions. This year... She's a little 15,500 taxes each year. She were not eligible for any tax deductions. This year, she's eligible for tax deductions that can reduce the amount of tax she owes by. These taxes just reduce the amount she owes this year by D percent. Okay, so it's reducing by D percent. So basically what they're saying is D percent of 15,500. Whoops. Uh, whatever, that's fine. Equals 23250. Uh-oh, 2325, 0. 0. Uh, just 2325. And now we just divide 2325. Make sure the numbers are right. Wait a minute. Simplifying this. Yeah, this is right. What am I doing? Oops. It's 15%. Then I multiply by 100, but 15. And they want you to put it in as the percent value, not 0.15. Right? Yeah, 15. 36. System of equations above has no soluciones. It means the lines are parallel. That's what no solutions mean, same slope. If A and B are constants, what is the value of A over B? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to put them both in the slope-intercept form. Negative BY equals negative AX plus 9. Divide by negative BY equals negative A over negative BX plus whatever. It doesn't matter. So the slope of the bottom, the this one is A over B, and it's got to equal this one. First of all, I'm going to multiply everything by 4. Put this in standard form. 3x minus 2y equals 48, right? And then negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 48. Divide by negative 2y equals 3 halves x plus whatever. So we need a over b to equal 3 over 2. Boom. The system of equations above has no solutions. If A and B are constants, what is the value of A over B? So I think that's right. Over two. And negative three fourths, negative positive three. Yeah, it's right. Okay. 37, 38, refer to the following information. International tourist arrivals in millions. The table above shows the number of international tourist arrivals rounded to the nearest tenth of a million to the top nine tourist destinations. In both 2012 and 2013. Okay. Based on the information given to the table, how much greater in millions was the meat? Let me see the timer. I'm not even paying attention. Based on the information given in the table, how much greater in millions was the median number of International tourist arrivals to the top nine tourist destinations. Okay. 
Okay, so how much greater is 2013 than 2012 to the nearest tenth of a million? So these are already in millions. Okay, so we're going to number it. I'm actually going to change up the color so it's a little, it's a little better. So well, I'm not going to rewrite it, notice, right? Because that's just going to take me too long. So I got one, two, three, four, five. And then here I got one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the median is at the five. Oh, it's in the same spot. So it's that minus that, which is 1.3. Just make sure that's right. One point three. The number of international tourist arrivals in Russia in two thousand twelve. Russia in two thousand twelve was thirteen point five percent, or one point one three five times Russia in two thousand eleven. The number of international tourist arrivals in Russia was k million more. The number of international tourists in Russia was K million more in 2012. It was a valid K. Okay. We have enough information. So I already know in 2012, Russia was 24.7, right? So 24.7 equals 1.135. X, forget about that, right? 1.135, which is what? That's not good. Twenty one point seven six two is what it was in two thousand eleven. So, and then we want to know how much more. So I just do twenty four point seven minus this. The nearest integer is three, three million. Okay, I'm really, really starting to feel a little exhausted, but let me see. Let me see if that makes sense. Three, four, five, six. <sighs> Greater than in 2011. So in 2011, if we said it's about 21, 22, let's say. 10%, that's 2.2 plus a third is about seven, so 2.8, so 2.9, that makes sense. Okay, so I think I think two point I think three million sounds right. Let's go ahead and stop the clock and check our work. B D B A D B ooh, it's too thin. B D B A D. Six is A C A D D. All right, 11 is A, D, C, B, D. Sixteen is B, C, B, B, A. B, C, B, B, A. 21 is D, B, B, C, C. Six is D A C A D. D, great. 
31 is 6286. 2, 8. 34 is 9 and 15. 36 is 3 halves. 37 is 1.3. And for the win is 3. Okay. Whew. Gotten through two practice tests. Let's see what's up with people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who is this dude? Jeez. What's happening? Yo, Viraj. Let's see if I can report this guy. Dang. Getting some toxic people on here. All right, they should all be blocked now. What's up, Johan? Do you have a video on what to take and what to do to expect an SAT in this pandemic? Yeah, I do. I do. I'll send it to you right now. Um, wow. Don't I have any moderators on here that can help me out with this stuff? When these idiots are spamming. What's up, Nelson? Okay, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna take a little break here. Oof. Uh, what was it? Morning of SAT. Yeah, Yo, you're welcome, Johan. Hey, you're very, you're very welcome. What's up, everybody? And welcome. Why don't we take a minute and watch this video together? Nah, you guys can watch it later. But there it is. Um, I was just gonna maybe use that to take a little break, but but there's the video. So this kind of gives you an idea. You'll see like, you know. Welcome back to another video on the SAT. And this video is all about what to do the morning of your SAT in a COVID-19 world. So first we're gonna start off with a bit. Yeah, I am tired now. Uh, so this is a three, I mean, this is a three hours already. We're, we're halfway there again, theoretically, if I can, if I can actually pull this off, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, maybe we'll finish before the six hours to be honest. Cause I only put four practice tests up here. Um, and I'm getting them done in like under an hour. It feels like, so let's keep it going. I don't know how it's actually going to look in 2021. It's kind of, I think it's a little bit unknown still, but. But, um, all right, let's go back to college test eight in the mix. <laughs> I do look extremely tired, but I'm going to power through my friends. I'm going to try. We go. We got another question. We got another 25 minutes on the clock. We are going to start in three, two, one. Let's go. The equation above, what is the value of X? So this is 3X, 4X, 5X, 6X. 6X minus 5 equals 7 plus 2X. Subtract 2X from both sides. Add 5 to both sides and we get 12X equals 3. Plug and chug. 9 plus 9 is 18, minus 5 is 13. 7 plus 6 is 13, boom, done. All right, number 
two. The graph above shows the distance traveled D in feet by a product on the conveyor belt on minutes after the product is placed in the belt. Which of the following equations correctly relates D and M? All right. D equals 2M. That's it. If you don't believe me, plug in 1, we get 2. Plug in 2, we get 4, so on and so forth. But it's also the slope, right? It's up 2 over 1. Boom, done. Number trace. The formula below is often used by project managers to compute E, the estimated time to complete a job, where O is the shortest completion time, P is the longest completion Okay, blah, blah, blah. This is just isolate, isolating quantities. And I knew it was too early for it's so complicated. So just multiply both sides by 6. Subtract O and subtract 4M, and we got P by itself. Boom, done. The figure above RT equals UT. Let's highlight those. RT equals TU, which means that this is an isosceles triangle, which means that this is 114. These two angles are equal, which means 70, so they add up to 66. So they're 33 and 33. What is the value of X? We want that little angle in there. And then we also know that this is, oh, we didn't even need that, but this is 33, that's 31. That means this in the triangle sum theorem, that's 64. So this is 116. And these two are sup because they form a straight angle. So X is 64. Also the sum of these, oh, it's also the sum of these external, so yeah multiple ways to do it five the width of a rectangular dance floor is w feet the length of the floor is six feet longer than the width which is the length of the perimeter it's two w plus six times two so four w right because this is w this is six plus w and it is what it is boom done perimeter Make sure I didn't make a mistake. 4w plus 12. All right, which of the following consists of the y coordinates of all points to satisfy the system equation? Inequalities above. Y coordinate. Yes. Okay, first of all, this is going to be x is greater than 5 halves, right? And this is going to be. Hmm. What? I don't even get this. If X, which of the following consists of the Y coordinates? Oh, I see. So if X is always going to be greater than five halves, the minimum would be plug five halves in here, and it's Y is, it's y is greater than four. It's this. So, like, we can test this. So, again, five halves wouldn't – so X has to be bigger than five halves. So if I plugged in five halves here, I'd get four. But X has to be bigger than that, which means Y has to be bigger than that. And then you plug in like three, six minus one is five, y is greater than five, so on and so forth. So that's, that's it. What is the solution? So first isolate the square root, two x plus six. Again, you could plug and chug if you want, but I'll do it the old school way. x minus one square both sides. That squared is x squared minus two x plus one. Then I got x, set everything equal to zero, x squared, subtract two x from both sides minus four x, subtract six minus five zero factor five and one minus plus because those multiplied negative five add to negative four my solutions are negative one and five now we got to check them so if i plug in five here i got 10 6 16 the square root of that is four four plus four is eight five works so anything without five is out now we check negative one negative one plus three is two negative two plus six Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, so negative 1 is out. 8. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to this? Okay. Factor, 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 my friends. x times x squared minus 9. Oh, and that factors into a difference of squares. Oops x minus 3. The bottom factors to what multiplies to negative 3 and adds to negative 2, which is this. Cancel, cancel. And we get x times x plus 3 over x plus 1. Just make sure I didn't make a mistake. x minus 3, x plus 1. Yeah. 
It's got to be a fifth one on the bottom. Okay, good. Next is this. Point P is on the circle. Now this PQ is a diameter of the circle. What are the coordinates of point Q? So first of all, the diameter is 8 because the radius is 4. Square root of that. Okay, got it. So it's got to be 8 away from this. 2, negative 5, were? no, it's got to go through the center. Okay, I get it. So 10, negative 5. And then the center is at 6, negative 5. So it's, it's all on negative 5, so up 4. So it is 2, negative 5. Whoops. Because we're just going straight up vertical. Right? 4, 4. A group of 202 people went on an overnight camping trip, taking a 60, taking 60 tents with them. Some of the tents held two people each, and the rest held four. 202. X plus Y equals 60. So this is the two-person tent, four-person tent, just a system of equations, because the total tents is 60, and this represents 202. Assuming that all the tents were filled to capacity, every person got to sleep in a tent, Exactly how many of them were two-person tents? Multiply bottom by negative two. Two y equals 82, y equals 41. Boom, oh wait, we want, that's four-person tents. So it's 19, 19 two-person tents. So let's make sure, 38. Four times that is 164. We add it up and we get 202. <clears throat> Which of the following could be the equation of the graph above? A zero. Double root because it bounces. I mean, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Multiplicity of two and a root at two. So it should be x plus three, x minus two, and an x squared. Boom. I need number 12. Okay, 2A. 2AB equals 1 half. What is the value of B over A? First, I'm going to cross multiply and get B equals 4A. And we're trying to solve for B over A. So I divide by A, divide by A, cancel. B over A equals 4. And does that make sense? For... Yeah, it makes sense. Oil and gas production on a certain area dropped from 4 million barrels in 2000 to 2013. Decrease at a constant rate. So it's a decrease of 2.1 over 13, which is the same as 21 over 130 this one which of the best models this rate got my neck is really hurting us we know gas production decrease constant which is the volume unit functions best models of production it's two years after 2000 so first thing you can do is you can plug in thir if you didn't know this how to do the slope like i should be able to plug in 13 to the right equation and get 1.9 this wouldn't make sense because it would go up this would go up this would go down but it would be off by a little bit here let's just do it for fun Oh, shoot. This is a non-calculator. Sorry, I can't use a calculator. So we can't use the calculator. So how else could you do? See, that's a pretty hard one then um, to, to, to verify that way. Um, but I guess... Plug in 13. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Because I can't... So if I do that mentally, 190 plus 57 is 247. Yeah, so 247 over 130 is less than 2, so we know it's not going to do enough. That's the way you can eliminate it. Okay, 14. How many solutions are there to the system of equations above? Mm, well, there's not going to be 4. That does, it's impossible. Okay, so we're going to do a little substitution, right? Y equals 5X minus 8, so replace that Y, 5X minus 8. 
x squared plus 3x minus 7. Isolate. Subtract 5x from both sides. Add 8 to both sides. Factor, factor. What well, multiplies to 1 and adds to negative 2? Negative 1, negative 1. Guess what? It's got a double root at x equals 1, and that means there's exactly one solution. Let's just make sure. 1 is 1 plus 1, negative 3. 1, negative 3. Yeah, I mean, I think that works. That makes sense to me. I might have to call it after this test, guys. I wasn't expecting to have all this neck pain, and it just popped out of nowhere. Wow. Okay, the function g and h are defined above. What is the value of h of 0? Okay. h of 0 is 1 minus g of 0, right? Because you're plugging in for x. And then g of 0 is 2 minus 0, which is 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So 1 minus negative 1 is 2, right? Hold on, let me just make sure I didn't make a mistake. What is the value of the functions g and h? Functions g and h are defined above. What is the value of? I think that's right. I think that's right. Okay, 16. If a is a solution to the equation above, what is the value of a? So first let's factor. So what multiplies to negative 12 adds to positive 1 in the middle, right? Plus 4 minus 3. So my solutions are negative 4 and 3, but we want the 3 value. We always want positive. Even if they didn't say that, you know that. Um, 9 plus 3 is 12, and it works. Next, the sum of negative 2x squared plus that can be written in form of this. What is this? Okay, so just let's add these. Negative 2x plus 3x squared is x squared with a 1. x plus 7x is 8x. And then 31 plus negative 8 is 23. And so this is A, B, and C, and they want you to add it up. A plus 23 is 31, 32, boom, done. 18, x, y satisfies system equations above. What's the value of y? Nicely set up. Add them together. The x's cancel out. y plus 3y is 4y. Negative 3.5 plus 9.5 is 6. Divide by 4, divide by 4. y equals 3 over 2 for the win. A startup company opened with eight employees. The company's growth plan assumes that two new employees will be hired each quarter. Two new employees will be hired each quarter. So that's eight per year. First five years. If an equation written in the form y equals ax plus b to represent the number of employees, y employed by the company x quarters after the company opened, what is the value of b? It's eight. Right? It's just a y-intercept. And I did this in years, but, you, you know, we could have done it as y equals um, 2 quarter or 2x, let's say. I think it's just 8. So a startup company opened with 8. That's y-intercept because that's the initial value. The company's growth plan assumes that 2 new employees will be hired every quarter. First five years. If an equation written that is to represent the number of employees employed by the company, x quarters of the company opened. Where's the value of B? 8. I think it's just that simple. It's weird for question 19, but I'm pretty sure. In the circle above, point A is the center and the length of arc BC. Again, it's kind of assuming the minor arc, but let's just take it for that because that's probably what they're talking about. It's two, yeah, and it's the smaller, so I guess that makes sense. It's two fifths of the circumference of the circle. What's the value of X? So if this is two fifths of the circumference, X is two-fifths of 360 degrees. And th th we know it's degrees because of that little symbol. So then multiply by two, it's 720 divided by five. Remember I rule for dividing by five, nix the last digit or like move the decimal over once. If it's zero, you can nix it and then double it. It's 144. All right, let's start that timer. We got 10 minutes to spare, but we're not gonna use it. We're just going to check, oh wait. Load the new one. Oh no, wrong one. Chapter one and eight. All right, let's see what we got here.
D A A C B. D A A C B. Six is B B D A C. Ah, uh, eleven is B D C C D. B D C C D. Okay, I'm glad I got those right because I, I was like getting a little in that zone where I'm not totally sure what I'm doing. Um, just from exhaustion. Three, thirty-two, three halves, eight. Perfect. And one forty-four. Beautiful. Okay, those are all correct. Let me see what's going on in the in the chat real quick. Oh, your SAT got canceled. I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that. So, guys, I am. All right, later, Josiah. Rewind, dude. Um, here's the deal. I, I've been going about three hours, and I'm really starting to fade. Let me answer your questions on this. Yes, yeah, so you got a question on nine. Okay. So here's the deal. We're Remember, you got to know the basics of a circle equation, right? And they're telling you that the vertex, the center of the circle is right here, h comma k. So the center is at 6, negative 5. The opposite of that, opposite of that. So center is at 6, negative 5. Then they're telling you p is on the circle, and it's coordinate 10, negative 5 up here. And they're saying, what are the coordinates of Q? And they're also telling you that this is going to make a diameter, right? Diameter is a line that goes from one side to the other that crosses through the center. So, and by the way, I also know that the radius is 4, and that matches up with this. That's 4 away. So to get to the other side, we've got to go another 4, but we're going straight down since we went straight up. So if I go straight down, or sorry, I did this backward. <laughs> Actually, this is more, it's not straight down. It's actually, sorry, 10, negative 5 is over here, right? So then Q would be over here. So it's going straight across. So if 10, negative 5, 6, negative 5, another 4 back is 2, negative 5. And that's how you do it. Sure, 11. Which of the following could be the equation? So look, it's all about the zeros. If there's a zero at negative three, that means it's, you're going to see x minus negative three. If there's a zero at two, you're going to see x minus two. If there's a zero at zero, you're going to see an x. But why is it x squared? Because it bounces, it doesn't penetrate. When it bounces, it's got a multiplicity, an even multiplicity. So this x has to either be squared or to the fourth power or whatever, but the only option is with the squared. These are backwards with the with the x-intercepts. This would be an x-intercept of negative 2 and positive 3. So that's the breakdown. Oh, number 6. Okay. I think, guys, I'm going to do 6, and then I'm going to bounce. And I'm really bummed that I couldn't do the full 6 hours. I'll update the, the thumbnail to say 3, but I um, – all right, fine. And Veronica will also do 4. This one's pretty hard. What they're saying, though, is that if you isolate that x has to be greater than 5 over 2. So if x is greater than 5 over 2, at a minimum, if we just assume, but it can't even be that, but if I, at minimum I put 5 over 2 in for x, we can say y is greater than 2 times 5 over 2 minus 1. Cancel the 2s. y is greater than 5 minus 1. y is greater than 4. And that's how we get this. It's essentially plugging in even though, it's essentially plugging in even though we have uh, an inequality, which you normally wouldn't do. Four, you said, right? Yeah, four is just a little puzzle, right? First, we start off that this is an isosceles triangle. If it's isosceles, the opposite angles are equal. That's why I knew those were 33 and 33 because of the triangle angle sum theorem. They have to add up to 180 with 114. And if that's 33 and that's 31, again, triangle sum, this has to be 116 to add to 180. And then now these guys are sup, so x is 64. Yeah, that sounds good too, Grace. All right. All right, I think I got everything. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm fading, and I'm fading badly. Did you guys appreciate this? Did you guys find that this was useful or helpful? And, and I mean, if so, maybe I can try and do another one 
later this week, maybe another three hour one or two hour one since and, and finish up these these college board tests. If you did find it helpful, and we can throw in some other information in there as well. What do you guys think? Leave your comments in the comment section or if you're still on the live chat, you can let me know there. But that's it. And I, get, I know people were asking about where to get the formulas at the beginning of this. So if you want to get the formula sheet, go to scalarlearning.com. Download it there and you're good to go, my friends. Thank you, Johan. All right, Parth, amazing. I'm so glad to hear that. That's the whole goal of this. And I'm glad it was helpful. And I think I'm going to go to sleep and sleep like a, a baby. This is going to be amazing. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. If you haven't done so yet, join our Discord server. And if you haven't done so yet, click that like button. Oh, my God, 185 likes. I didn't even see that. You guys are legends. Thank you so much for all the likes, everybody. I really, really, really appreciate it. They don't understand, uh, unless you have a YouTube channel, how important those likes are and the engagement is to growing the channel and spreading the word. So it means a lot. It might seem like a little small click of the button and meaningless to you, but to me, actually, it's really, really valuable, especially as I'm trying to reach more students and more people and just trying to spread the word that you can learn this stuff really effectively through YouTube and through grit and determination and believing that you just believing. That's why I told the story at the beginning. You just got to believe that you can get better and then you won't be so afraid like you guys aren't. But a lot of people are just afraid to put in the effort because they don't think it's going to do anything, but it can and it does. And you guys are proof of that. Anybody who wants to give me a testimonial and talk about the growth that you experienced and tell your story too, that'd be amazing. Thank you guys for all the love. I really, again, that also means a lot to me too, especially when I'm tired and I'm grinding and I'm having, uh, it's been a long week. It's been a really hard week actually. So thank you guys so much. I'll be doing more live streams later this week and maybe I'll do another one depending on what you guys say in the comments and I will see you in the next video. You're the legend. All right. Thank you, Lillian. You're the legend. Take it easy and I will see you. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.